We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. So, you want to produce some basketball, but not just that top camera that covers the game action, but the multiple camera, instant replay, announcer commentary, score and team graphics, and integrated video content type of coverage? I think it's fair to say it's never been easier or required less people than how you can do it now with a computer at center court. Setting up the production hub here makes it possible to bring all your audio and video elements into a central location. It serves as the best seat in the house for announcers next to you, and the best possible camera placement to cut in a floor-level angle with your game cam for close-ups. Having multiple camera angles is the best way in which to add production value. You can bring the viewer a courtside seat, able to see the numbers on jerseys or emotions on faces. Even getting cameras up as static shots along the baselines helps give variety to moments needed for replay or free throws. Knowing the equipment to get camera feeds to be compatible is important. If you are lucky and have enough people to man the floor cams and the operators know their assignments, there isn't much directing that is needed, and production value really starts to show. Your production may even include sharing your live output to a video board for the in-house audience, making moments even more memorable. Getting some love. Put him on the video board in Hodgman County went nuts. Oh man, they love him. Oh, take a bow, young man. In many ways, the secret to what makes the coverage have that professional touch is what you can't even see. Adding quality audio feeds from multiple sources brings the game to life. Crowd, court, coaches, whistles, shoes, and yeah, even the rims get mic'd. You can pull most of these audio feeds through your on-camera microphones, and they are mixed right inside production truck. A key element to making the coverage become much more than basic game action is the producer's camera. With a zoom rocker and the ability to see your feed on the computer screen, it makes for a really easy option to reach over and get the extra coverage. Whether that's for moments in between the game action or following the play for a prime replay angle, this becomes the way in which you can maximize your production value while not needing to add more people to your crew. You may be wondering how you would ever be able to operate a camera and be the person running the entire show. It's pretty simple with an efficient setup on the table that allows for your right hand to manage switching cameras and capturing replay using the keyboard. The mouse is ready when it's time to give the sponsors what they paid for, which might be how you are even getting to have all this fun in the first place. Easy access to volume control becomes really important when audio from your talent fluctuates as things get exciting. Also, you know that music you hear in professional broadcasts when they're going to commercial? You'll want to do that too. It really is the backtrack and rhythm of the show. This model of production with a producer running camera, audio, replay, and graphics is not possible if you are also responsible for managing a clock or manually keeping score. Technology can do all the work for you thanks to a blue frame partner, Scorebird, who has created the Nest. This unit is connected directly to the facility's score controller and delivers game data to the cloud that is seamlessly pulled down into production truck and populated into the score graphic in real time. It just doesn't get more efficient than this. KCMC Sports, Blue Frame Technology and Scorebird, the model for producing more with less. With IdeaTech moving into Chase County, overall what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet service and the relationship that we're building with IdeaTech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. Do watch me now. Just watch me. Do 
So the, the bottom line is, it, Kansans care about each other, and Kansans care about their kids. That, that, that's a fact, without a doubt, in my opinion. Probably the, the, one of the most important accomplishment, maybe was an opportunity to serve. Opportunity to serve. Maybe it's time to start winding down. Or maybe you can finally gear up. Either way, what you need is the space to do it and the freedom to invest in what matters most. A place where you can find yourself all alone, but never lonely. Where staying busy is always optional, but knowing you are valued is not. Where quality healthcare is for friends, not clients, and access to the best broadband means less time traveling and more time connecting. More time to read stories, share stories, and continue to write your own, where you can know exactly what you want to do each day, or simply leave your plans up in the air. Somewhere to drink in the beauty of nature, share a cup of coffee with neighbors, and where breakfast isn't really about the food. Because out here, there's a sense of belonging that can't be explained so much as it can be felt, and strangers are just friends that you haven't met yet. So when you embrace all that our community has to offer, it returns the favor again and again. Kiowa County. Open spaces, open minds, and open for the best years of your life.
Imagine you debating or marching before hundreds of people. Kansas high school students have been debating and performing spectacular marching halftime since school started. You are invited to support the fall activities programs of your school, attend a game, volunteer to judge a debate, or enjoy a music program. A public service message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and KCMC Sports.
We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. So, you want to produce some basketball, but not just that top camera that covers the game action, but the multiple camera, instant replay, announcer commentary, score and team graphics, and integrated video content type of coverage? I think it's fair to say it's never been easier or required less people than how you can do it now with a computer at center court. Setting up the production up here makes it possible to bring all your audio and video elements into a central location. It serves as the best seat in the house for announcers next to you and the best possible camera placement to cut in a floor-level angle with your game cam for close-ups. Having multiple camera angles is the best way in which to add production value. You can bring the viewer a courtside seat, able to see the numbers on jerseys or emotions on faces. Even getting cameras up as static shots along the baselines helps give variety to moments needed for replay or free throws. Knowing the equipment to get camera feeds to be compatible is important. If you are lucky and have enough people to man the floor cams and the operators know their assignments, there isn't much directing that is needed, and production value really starts to show. Your production may even include sharing your live output to a video board for the in-house audience, making moments even more memorable. Getting some love. Put him on the video board and Hodgman County went nuts. Oh man, they love him. Oh, take a bow, young man. In many ways, the secret to what makes the coverage have that professional touch is what you can't even see. Adding quality audio feeds from multiple sources brings the game to life. Crowd, court, coaches, whistles, shoes, and yeah, even the rims get mic'd. You can pull most of these audio feeds through your on-camera microphones, and they are mixed right inside production truck. A key element to making the coverage become much more than basic game action is the producer's camera. With a zoom rocker and the ability to see your feed on the computer screen, it makes for a really easy option to reach over and get the extra coverage. Whether that's for moments in between the game action or following the play for a prime replay angle. This becomes the way in which you can maximize your production value while not needing to add more people to your crew. You may be wondering how you would ever be able to operate a camera and be the person running the entire show. It's pretty simple with an efficient setup on the table that allows for your right hand to manage switching cameras and capturing replay using the keyboard. 
The mouse is ready when it's time to give the sponsors what they paid for, which might be how you are even getting to have all this fun in the first place. Easy access to volume control becomes really important when audio from your talent fluctuates as things get exciting. Also, you know that music you hear in professional broadcasts when they're going to commercial? You'll want to do that too. It really is the backtrack and rhythm of the show. This model of production with a producer running camera, audio, replay, and graphics is not possible if you are also responsible for managing a clock or manually keeping score. Technology can do all the work for you thanks to a blue frame partner, Scorebird, who has created the Nest. This unit is connected directly to the facility's score controller and delivers game data to the cloud that is seamlessly pulled down into production truck and populated into the score graphic in real time. It just doesn't get more efficient than this. KCMC Sports, Blue Frame Technology and Scorebird, the model for producing more with less. With IdeaTech moving into Chase County, overall what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet service and the relationship that we're building with IdeaTech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. Do watch me now. Just watch me. Just watch me now. So the, the bottom line is, it, Kansans care about each other, and Kansans care about their kids. Yeah, that, that's a fact, without a doubt, in my opinion. Probably the, the, one of the most important accomplishments, maybe was an opportunity to serve. Opportunity to serve. Maybe it's time to start winding down. 
or maybe you can finally gear up. Either way, what you need is the space to do it and the freedom to invest in what matters most. A place where you can find yourself all alone, but never lonely. Where staying busy is always optional, but knowing you are valued is not. Where quality healthcare is for friends, not clients, and access to the best broadband means less time traveling and more time connecting. More time to read stories, share stories, and continue to write your own. Where you can know exactly what you want to do each day. Or simply leave your plans up in the air. Somewhere to drink in the beauty of nature. Share a cup of coffee with neighbors. And where breakfast isn't really about the food. Because out here, there's a sense of belonging that can't be explained so much as it can be felt. And strangers are just friends that you haven't met yet. So when you embrace all that our community has to offer, it returns the favor again and again. Kiowa County. Open spaces, open minds, and open for the best years of your life.
We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment.
He got to my house this morning, what? 815 walked outside and this is freaking stupid.
Another pitch for the street, but also the street net. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I said street. <laughs> oh, back cramp. Oh, my God. Well, that's a bad day. Oh, we're losing. We're losing. We lost the announcer. Woo! He lied. He lied. He lied. He sat too long. He sat too long. He sat too long. Make sure I have it before I start to leave it. Because after this game, I have to.
We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. So, you want to produce some basketball, but not just that top camera that covers the game action, but the multiple camera, instant replay, announcer commentary, score and team graphics, and integrated video content type of coverage? I think it's fair to say it's never been easier or required less people than how you can do it now with a computer at center court. Setting up the production up here makes it possible to bring all your audio and video elements into a central location. It serves as the best seat in the house for announcers next to you and the best possible camera placement to cut in a floor level angle with your game cam for close-ups. Having multiple camera angles is the best way in which to add production value. You can bring the viewer a courtside seat, able to see the numbers on jerseys or emotions on faces. Even getting cameras up as static shots along the baselines helps give variety to moments needed for replay or free throws. Knowing the equipment to get camera feeds to be compatible is important. If you are lucky and have enough people to man the floor cams and the operators know their assignments, there isn't much directing that is needed, and production value really starts to show. Your production may even include sharing your live output to a video board for the in-house audience, making moments even more memorable. Getting some love. Put him on the video board and Hodgman County went nuts. Oh man, they love him. Oh, take a bow, young man. In many ways, the secret to what makes the coverage have that professional touch is what you can't even see. Adding quality audio feeds from multiple sources brings the game to life. Crowd, court, coaches, whistles, shoes, and yeah, even the rims get mic'd. You can pull most of these audio feeds through your on-camera microphones, and they are mixed right inside production truck. A key element to making the coverage become much more than basic game action is the producer's camera. With a zoom rocker and the ability to see your feed on the computer screen, it makes for a really easy option to reach over and get the extra coverage. Whether that's for moments in between the game action or following the play for a prime replay angle. This becomes the way in which you can maximize your production value while not needing to add more people to your crew. You may be wondering how you would ever be able to operate a camera and be the person running the entire show. It's pretty simple with an efficient setup on the table that allows for your right hand to manage switching cameras and capturing replay using the keyboard. The mouse is ready when it's time to give the sponsors what they paid for, which might be how you were even getting to have all this fun in the first place. Easy access to volume control becomes really important when audio from your talent fluctuates as things get exciting. Also, you know that music you hear in professional broadcasts when they're going to commercial? You'll want to do that too. It really is the backtrack and rhythm of the show. This model of production with a producer running camera, audio, replay, and graphics is not possible if you are also responsible for managing a clock or manually keeping score. Technology can do all the work for you thanks to a blue frame partner, Scorebird, who has created the Nest. This unit is connected directly to the facility's score controller and delivers game data to the cloud that is seamlessly pulled down into production truck and populated into the score graphic in real time. It just doesn't get more efficient than this. KCMC Sports, Blue Frame Technology and Scorebird, the model for producing more with less. 
With Idea Tech moving into Chase County, overall what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet service and the relationship that we're building with Idea Tech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. Do watch me now. Just watch me. Just watch me now. So the, the bottom line is it, Kansans care about each other and Kansans care about their kids. Yeah, that, that, that's a fact, without a doubt, in my opinion. Probably the, the, one of the most important accomplishment maybe was an opportunity to serve. Opportunity to serve. Maybe it's time to start winding down. Or maybe you can finally gear up. Either way, what you need is the space to do it and the freedom to invest in what matters most. A place where you can find yourself all alone, but never lonely. Where staying busy is always optional, but knowing you are valued is not. Where quality healthcare is for friends, not clients, and access to the best broadband means less time traveling and more time connecting. More time to read stories, share stories, and continue to write your own, where you can know exactly what you want to do each day, or simply leave your plans up in the air. Somewhere to drink in the beauty of nature, share a cup of coffee with neighbors, and where breakfast isn't really about the food. Because out here, there's a sense of belonging that can't be explained so much as it can be felt, and strangers are just friends that you haven't met yet. So when you embrace all that our community has to offer, 
it returns the favor again and again. Kiowa County. Open spaces, open minds, and open for the best years of your life.
So, you want to produce some basketball, but not just that top camera that covers the game action, but the multiple camera, instant replay, announcer commentary, score and team graphics, and integrated video content type of coverage? I think it's fair to say it's never been easier or required less people than how you can do it now with a computer at center court. Setting up the production hub here makes it possible to bring all your audio and video elements into a central location. It serves as the best seat in the house for announcers next to you, and the best possible camera placement to cut in a floor-level angle with your game cam for close-ups. Having multiple camera angles is the best way in which to add production value. You can bring the viewer a courtside seat, able to see the numbers on jerseys or emotions on faces. Even getting cameras up as static shots along the baselines helps give variety to moments needed for replay or free throws. Knowing the equipment to get camera feeds to be compatible is important. If you are lucky and have enough people to man the floor cams and the operators know their assignments, there isn't much directing that is needed, and production value really starts to show. Your production may even include sharing your live output to a video board for the in-house audience, making moments even more memorable. Getting some love. Put him on the video board in Hodgman County went nuts. Oh man, they love him. Oh, take a bow, young man. In many ways, the secret to what makes the coverage have that professional touch is what you can't even see. Adding quality audio feeds from multiple sources brings the game to life. Crowd, court, coaches, whistles, shoes, and yeah, even the rims get mic'd. You can pull most of these audio feeds through your on-camera microphones, and they are mixed right inside production truck. A key element to making the coverage become much more than basic game action is the producer's camera. With a zoom rocker and the ability to see your feed on the computer screen, it makes for a really easy option to reach over and get the extra coverage. Whether that's for moments in between the game action or following the play for a prime replay angle, this becomes the way in which you can maximize your production value while not needing to add more people to your crew. You may be wondering how you would ever be able to operate a camera and be the person running the entire show. It's pretty simple with an efficient setup on the table that allows for your right hand to manage switching cameras and capturing replay using the keyboard. The mouse is ready when it's time to give the sponsors what they paid for, which might be how you are even getting to have all this fun in the first place. Easy access to volume control becomes really important when audio from your talent fluctuates as things get exciting. Also, you know that music you hear in professional broadcasts when they're going to commercial? You'll want to do that too. It really is the backtrack and rhythm of the show. This model of production with a producer running camera, audio, replay, and graphics is not possible if you are also responsible for managing a clock or manually keeping score. Technology can do all the work for you thanks to a blue frame partner, Scorebird, who has created the Nest. This unit is connected directly to the facility's score controller and delivers game data to the cloud that is seamlessly pulled down into production truck and populated into the score graphic in real time. It just doesn't get more efficient than this. KCMC Sports, Blue Frame Technology and Scorebird, the model for producing more with less. With IdeaTech moving into Chase County, overall what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet service and the relationship that we're building with IdeaTech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. Do watch me now. Just watch me. Just watch me now.
So the, the bottom line is it Kansans care about each other and Kansans care about their kids. That, that, that's a fact, without a doubt, in my opinion. Probably the, the, one of the most important accomplishments maybe was an opportunity to serve. Opportunity to serve. Maybe it's time to start winding down. Or maybe you can finally gear up. Either way, what you need is the space to do it and the freedom to invest in what matters most. A place where you can find yourself all alone, but never lonely. Where staying busy is always optional, but knowing you are valued is not. Where quality healthcare is for friends, not clients, and access to the best broadband means less time traveling and more time connecting. More time to read stories, share stories, and continue to write your own, where you can know exactly what you want to do each day, or simply leave your plans up in the air. Somewhere to drink in the beauty of nature, share a cup of coffee with neighbors, and where breakfast isn't really about the food. Because out here, there's a sense of belonging that can't be explained so much as it can be felt, and strangers are just friends that you haven't met yet. So when you embrace all that our community has to offer, it returns the favor again and again. Kiowa County, open spaces, open minds, and open for the best years of your life.
evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Dodge City. It's the semifinals. Up first, we've got Kiowa County, the 10 seed, and on the other side of that, the two seed, the three seed, and the favorite in Pawnee Heights. They are led by Coach Matt Hoffman in his sixth year at Kiowa County. Sawyer Campbell had a massive night on Tuesday, put up 31 for the Mavericks. On the other side, Coach Rick Carlson has his Tigers in the semis for the first time in 22 years. They're led by the best player in the league, Alec Carlson. Averages 25 a night. This one's going to be fun. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in Cameron Bernie, head coach Tim Ritzke with us here. And coach, Pawnee Heights, Kiowa County. Let's start with Kiowa County. Sawyer Campbell on Tuesday night, 31 for him. That's really a great night for uh, any player, let alone a freshman player playing in his first tournament. So, uh, you know, I was really impressed with him. He missed a couple shots, but boy, once it, uh, he saw the ball go in the goal the rest of the night, it was uh, full speed ahead. Yep. On the other side, uh, you know, Alec, Alec is, uh, I think, the best athlete in the league. Uh, not necessarily just the best athlete, but the best basketball player. I don't see a player in the league one-on-one -on -one that could keep uh, Alec in front of him. So, uh, Kiowa County's got a little more depth. Uh, Pawnee Heights is going to have to uh, stay out of foul trouble. Yep. So, Pawnee Heights, uh, only about five or six guys deep. And uh, talking with Coach Hoffman before the game, asking, what are you going to do with Carlson? He said, well, we may try something that maybe nobody has tried on him this year. We're going to play him straight up man and say, okay, I guess if he gets 35, we hold the rest of them to less than 15 and figure out how to get to 51. Right. That's uh, There's a lot of different ways to uh, defend a really good player. The only uh, hesitation that you have using that strategy is that, that if he gets going uh, and gets confidence, uh, then you got a load on your hands. But uh, Kiowa County, you know, I think Matt does a great job there. Rick does a great job at Pawnee Heights every year. So it's a good matchup. Oh, it's going to be fun. Maybe two of the most explosive teams in the league. Dieter Ding brothers out there with Westlow Thompson. And that Sawyer Campbell had 31 on Tuesday. He missed his first shot tonight as well. So Carlson going to have it. It's Brady Dieterding is the one that draws the matchup on him. Shot no good. Dieterding will pull down the board. David Hamby along with Dakota Ryan, the other two for Pawnee Heights. And, Coach, those guys are going to have to have pretty good nights tonight. Yeah. You know, we got two really uh, good players, uh, good scores, And they uh, both took the first shot for their team. Campbell, turnaround jumper, no good. Pawnee Heights, it's the first time in 22 years that they've been in the semifinals of the league tournament. On the other side, Kiowa County, if they win it, they would be the lowest seed ever to make a league tournament championship game in the Spa League. They're the 10 seed. Hamby thought about it, will dump it off. Steegy off the window and good. Nice pass by Hamby. Nice patient pass. He waited uh, until the right time to throw that pass. That made a lot of difference there. If he would have forced it, I think it would have been knocked away. Dieter Ding with it, top of the key now. Carlson is on him. Thompson had a pretty decent night the other night, 13 for him and hit a big time three. Looks to get it inside, now he'll hand it off. Brady, they come to Westlow. Stegey's on him, they'll come left side now. Thompson, tough jumper, no good. Rebound pulled down by Ryan and Hamby now. David looking to run for the Tigers. Brock Dieterding on him. This Jimmy Gardner with it. Now back to Hamby. About two minutes gone by here in this first quarter. Inside off the window and good from Carlson. And Coach Hoffman going to take a quick timeout and not happy at all. That was a really strong drive. And... Uh, I think one of the things that makes Carlson so hard to defend is not just his athletic ability and basketball skills, but he is deceivingly strong. If you watch, uh, or if we show it at some point, you'll see that drive. And man, that's uh, 
that's a really powerful drive and a powerful finish. Players like that, uh, not only able to finish in traffic, but get to the free throw line a lot. So, uh, Alex, Alex off to a good start. About two minutes gone by here in this first quarter. Kiowa County, they've gotten the kid that had 31, a couple of pretty good looks so far tonight, and just playing in his first semifinal game, just his second game ever in the United Wireless Arena. Tough ask to have a freshman yeah, have to is. have a big night. It is. And with young players, uh, a lot of times when they have a really good night, the goal looks big. Uh, they just have a tendency to think that's going to carry on. And sometimes it doesn't, and uh, you have to adjust a little bit. He got another good look here. That's it short off the front of the rim. Dieter Ding went after the board, didn't get it. Ryan. Dakota had a pretty good night the other night as well. We'll get it to Hamby. He's guarded by Chang. We'll kick it outside this Ryan. Thompson on him. Now to Hamby. Carlson with it. He'll work on Dieter Ding. Got him in the air. They get him inside, and once he gets to there, there's not very many people that are going to stop him. Again, his, his strength is very deceiving. Uh, obviously, he's a great jumper, but his explosiveness and strength inside is uh, really deceiving. Dieter Ding, rise and fire, no good. Thompson going to pick up the foul there. It'll be uh, his first. Not the first uh, whistle of the night. That'll bring Brock Dieterding back into the ballgame here for Campbell. As there you see inside Carlson. He gets to four feet. There's, I'm not sure there's anybody in the league that can no, stop him. No, no, no. They're helping. Uh, they're helping Dieterding on him. But they can't help too much off Hanby. One inside tough runner, no good. Thompson will pull down the board. And Jeremiah will bring it up. Brady Dieter Ding with it, Carlson on him. Going to get inside, tough runner, and it goes down for Brady. Real yeah. nice, real nice drive, pull up. Kiowa County on the board here. That going to open up the uh, basket, make it look a little bit bigger for some of the other guys maybe. Out of bounds, going to stay with Pawnee Heights. Dieter Ding's last move was was a really good basketball move because when he committed to shoot, he really got his shoulder squared around to the goal. Carlson, the spin move. Hamby, way downtown, no good. Fight for the board, out of bounds. Going to stay with Pawnee Heights. Good hustle by Ryan, kept that rebound alive and uh, earned Pawnee Heights another possession. Campbell back in here now for the Mavericks. They won it in 2020. That was the last time that they were in the semis. Carlson. That one poked free out of bounds by Thompson. They were looking for Stigi. Or excuse me, they were looking for Dakota Ryan. So on the last play, they set a ball screen for Carlson. Uh, Chang switched off, and Dieterding stayed uh, with him too. So they basically trapped or doubled off the the ball screen, so we may see it right here again. Same thing, Thompson helped. Jumper no good, rebound no, Hamby. We'll hand it off Carlson. Oh, the spin move and the shot fake plus the foul. Obviously that was a, a really good move by Carlson, but uh, people watching the game just remember that the only reason he got that opportunity is because Ryan hustled on the boards and kept the possession alive. That one, another offensive rebound. Carlson, it was halfway down for him. Campbell, quickly rejected by Carlson. Going to stay with the, the Mavericks here underneath. So this will be a good test for uh, Sawyer. You know, he had a great night the other night. He uh, hadn't been able to get one down here the first three or four shots. He'll track that one down on the logo. 3.25 to go in the first quarter. Dieterding, this Brock, now to Thompson. He'll get inside, all the way in, layup is good from Jeremiah.
Gardner. Now Hamby with it, the, the back door cut, wow. He's got another one, he's got eight. Everything he does uh, is very explosive. Dieter Dingy, Carlson blocked that one. Hamby will cross over, look to dribble through the defense. We'll get into the corner, gets it to Stigi. Back to him, Hamby, no good. Tapped out of bounds, gonna stay with the Pawnee Heights. So that's, uh, that's two uh, possessions right there that they missed a shot and one of their players kept the rebound alive and, and gave him another opportunity in this position. Hamby with it here. They'll go uh, right side. Gardner now up top Hamby. 2.25 to go. First quarter. Dribble handoff here. Carlson. Campbell on him. He went, got caught on the screen. Three ball no good. Another offensive rebound. And now Pawnee Heights on the reload. Carlson going to get inside. Had it poked free. Going to stay uh, with the Tigers. You have to be pretty impressed with the way Pawnee Heights has battled the boards here in the first quarter. That's uh, probably the difference in the game, the extra possessions they're getting offensive rebounding. Hamby. And it poked free. Westlow took it from him. Dieter Ding. Now to Thompson. We'll get inside. And going to be a foul call on the floor. I think Thompson may have gotten away with a travel right there on the last possession. So that foul on Gardner is first. Dieter Ding to trigger it in. We'll just go safety valve to his brother Brock. Brady. Now Brock. Got Gardner in the air, he got, went under the screen. They got the switch off for a second. They go the other way to Campbell though. His jumper again short. Carlson. Thompson on him, he'll cross over on him. Oh, he went back to the baseline, inside, dumped it off. It's gonna lead to an open three. David Hamby, no good. Stigi, another board for the Tigers. Another offensive rebound for uh, Pawnee Heights. Campbell. Campbell needs to get one down. Westlow is going to be fouled by Stigi. As uh, there you see the miss three and just no box out, coach. Yeah. Yeah. Those are hidden points in a game. Thompson and Westlow going to come out here. Silas Hawkins in the ball game for the first time for the Mavericks, and then Chang in as well. Dieterding got an open look. No good. Hawkins the board, and he's going to go to the line. I think that foul was on Carlson. So Carlson picks up his first. He got in a little bit of foul trouble the other night, but was able to weather the storm. Silas, his first free throw is good. And here you see the miss, the rebound, and then the foul. So going to be a lane violation here. As Leighton Monk now into the ball game, first time tonight for the Tigers. Stigi will come out here to an ovation from the Pawnee Heights crowd sitting behind us. Four points and a couple of big offensive rebounds early for him. Hawkins makes him pay with the lane violation. So he's got two, Thompson's got two, Dieter Ding's got two. On the other side for the Tigers, Carlson with eight and Stigi's got four. There's gonna be a foul on Brock Dieterding underneath. It's an interesting matchup now. They have uh, the freshman Campbell on, on Carlson. Alec with it. We'll come to Hamby now, right side, 43 seconds to go. Top of the key, Monk is open for three. Off the front iron, no good. Fight for the rebound, out of bounds, and Gardner there couldn't quite grab a hold of that one.
33 seconds to go first quarter. Tigers by six in this semifinal. Hawkins, the spin move, got it. Excuse me, that Campbell. Campbell's on the board, his first bucket of the night. That always helps if you've struggled just a little bit out of the gate here to get an easy shot, see the ball go in the goal. Carlson with 13. Everybody thinks he's going to do it himself, but he dished it off at the last possible second and threw a laser to get an assist on Tuesday. The spin move inside, hangs in the air, no good. Hawkins the board to Dieter Ding. And that one's going to come up well short. And Pawnee Heights leads it by four as we go to the second quarter. 12 to eight, the Tigers on top. It's been four guys score for Kiowa County for Pawnee Heights. It's Carlson with eight and Stegey with four, but in a semifinal, maybe you'd need Carlson to just go get you 40 tonight. We'll find out. Imagine you debating or marching before hundreds of people Kansas high school students have been debating and performing spectacular marching halftime since school started. You are invited to support the fall activities programs of your school, attend a game, volunteer to judge a debate, or enjoy a music program. A public service message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and KCMC Sports. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. Pawnee Heights 12 to 8 on top of Kiowa County. And coach, what impressed you in that first quarter? Uh, probably more than anything, uh, the ability of Pawnee Heights to offensive rebound against Kiowa County. And then some trouble. We'll find Jimmy Gardner up top. And if you're Kiowa County, you got to think that Coach Hoffman preached that pretty hard at the end of that quarter there, that they've got to get box outs as Jimmy Gardner knocks down a jumper. Every goal that Pawnee Heights scores other than Alec Carlson makes it harder to defend Alec Carlson. Thompson, no good. Carlson, eight for him in that first quarter. And I was kind of hoping he was going to get to a semifinal game just to see if all of a sudden he has to go get 35 or 40 for him to have a chance to win if he just goes and does it. He had eight in that first quarter. Hamby, Dieter Ding laid out after it. And Pawnee Heights gonna get a timeout. I oh no, we're gonna get a jump ball. It will give it to Kiowa County. So there you see, just stepping into it and knocking it down. Campbell inside turnaround jumper is good for Sawyer and that a good sign if you're a Maverick fan that he's got his second one to go down Ryan got another one his first basket of the night he had a big night for him on Tuesday put up 16 in that one Campbell's hit his last two shots, get, uh, getting that uh, little bunny in front of the uh, goal there to get him started. Uh, now he's got a little bit of rhythm. So he's going to uh, not think near so much about uh, taking his shot now. Dieter Ding, step back, fade Hard away. Shot. Hard shot. Hamby will walk it across. Tigers lead it by six. It's their largest lead of the night. They've had it a couple of times. Carlson, step back three, just a little bit short. Another offensive board, though, Coach, and it's going to lead to free throws. Well, <clears throat> part of that, too, is the fact that uh, any time that Carlson drives, there are two people trying to stop him. Uh, obviously, that's going to leave somebody turned loose on the boards if he does shoot it. That one going to go home for Dakota Ryan. Second one, a little bit short. Campbell going to clear the offensive rebound. Looking to run. Westlow 
Deflected out of bounds, going to stay with the, the Mavericks. Peter Ding to trigger it in this Brady. He'll get it to Brock now off Campbell, left side. Tried to force that one through to Chang, he just wasn't there. Carlson will hesitate, crosses over, will now work on the freshman and Campbell come left side. Hamby gonna let it fly and he hit it! David Hamby, his first field goal of the night, and already five guys have scored for the Tigers. They lead it by 10. Every goal Pawnee Heights supporting cast scores, again, makes it harder to defend Carlson. You just because you can't help as much. Brock, Dieterding, in and out and back down. One thing I would encourage young players and uh, junior high players, young players just getting started playing basketball, if you watch when Alec Carlson crosses the ball over, Look how low the dribble is, which makes his crossover so much quicker. Just miscommunication there between Hamby and Carlson. Thompson and Hawkins back into the game here. Thompson will trigger it in eight point lead for the Tigers. 4.52 to go second quarter. First of two semifinals here tonight. Chang with it will come right side now. Brock Dieterding. Now to Hawkins. Thompson outside. Brock Dieterding thought about the three. Hamby with the quick, quick closeout. Thompson. Chang with it. Now they get it to Dieterding. Iowa County working it around here, being pretty patient on this possession. Ryan went for the steal, didn't get it. 4-10 to go, second quarter. Thompson gonna go the opposite way of a screen. We'll come up top, dangerous pass, Hawkins tracks it down. Carlson went under the screen, Dieterding missed it short, it was a deep shot. And Carlson able to track it down and stay in bounds. Alec, way out there. That was a pretty tough shot there. Peter Ding, now uh, Thompson takes it strong inside and scores. Nice defense there by Gardner too to stay straight up on that and not yeah. give him the and one. Usually, uh, just like the last possession for Pawnee Heights, when you take a long range shot and uh, the other team rebounds, it usually leads to a pretty easy uh, possession on the other end. Six point lead for the Tigers here. And coach, you talked about that every basket that Pontiac Erie Heights gets just makes it that much harder to defend Carlson. Well, he hasn't scored yet in this second quarter. So how tough is that if you're on the other side of that, if you're Kiowa County? Well, you know, Kiowa County really has a good game plan. Uh, you know, they're playing him straight up, but they're also double teaming off the ball screens. Uh, you know, I think that's helped defend Carlson but it's also opened up some rebounding lanes for Pawnee Heights to get to the offensive boards, which uh, you know has led to several other opportunities to score. Six point lead here, 3.30 to go, second quarter. Carlson, Thompson on him. Jeremiah there uh, gonna pick up his second. Okay, so now they switch Campbell back onto Carlson. 3.20 to go. Carlson will hand it off here. Hamby had that one poked free and he lost it. They're going to say he touched it last out of bounds. Going to go to Kiowa County. So a basket and then they get a stop out of it. Dieter Ding. Everybody left on him. He went to trigger it in and just nobody was there. Hawkins almost had it poked free. We'll hand it off. Brady Dieterding will track it down. Thompson. 
He'll dump it off. Brady Dieterding inside, had it poked free. He'll track it down. Campbell will dribble into it, decided not to take it. Dieterding going to get all the way inside. Nice move, and he scores. So Dieterding's got four. Real strong drive right there, able to finish on the move. Hamby. Two and a half to go in this first half. Ryan. That one deflected out by Brock, and they're going to say that it went off of David Hamby. Pawnee Heights had several empty possessions here. So they need to buckle down uh, and get a stop on defense. Kiowa County wants to keep the momentum going. Dieter Ding. It was halfway down from the parking lot, and it pops out. Carlson. Dumps it off. Ryan, no good. Another offensive rebound, but Dieterding able to pull it away for Kiowa County. Kiowa County's got numbers. Open three in transition. Campbell comes up a little bit short. Ryan trying to run. Will take it all the way to the rim. No good. One on three. Thompson will go inside. Campbell will wrap it around. Found Brady Dieterding, and he couldn't knock it down. So the Mavericks coach getting some good looks, just nothing going down for yeah. him right now. That was a poor possession by Pawnee Heights the last time uh, offense was one on three. That a little better possession. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about as sure of two points as you're going to see in this tournament is if uh, Carlson can get uh, head and shoulders by and drive the ball to the goal. So that foul on Thompson, I believe it is. It's his third. So Chang will come in now for the Mavericks as Thompson going to have to sit down. Carlson, 10 points for him tonight. Can't get the free throw to go, so a rare miss on that one. Minute 20 to go, six-point lead for the Tigers. There you go with Dieterding. Pony Ice has gone to his zone here. Very poor defense. They get it inside. Dieter Ding lays it up and in. They basically doubled the outside player and let the inside player cut direct line to the goal. Carlson walked with it. Westlow set up for the charge, and at the last second, Carlson decided he didn't want to go that way. Is there what you're talking about? Double outside, and right. Kiowa County's leading scorer on the year, right. averaging almost 27 a night, gets a look from. So Pawnee Heights is right back to man. Campbell. Open up top. Brock Dieterding. Three balls good. He's got five, and it's a one-point ball game with 35 seconds to go. Coach Hoffman now pleading with his guys to get a stop. If you're Pawnee Heights here, it looks like maybe holding for one shot with a one-point lead. Looks like it. So they've got the floor spread. The only issue with uh, doing this is the people they've got in the corners are probably going to sag and not respect uh, the people that are guarding. Hamby with eight. We'll throw it backside deflected. Carlson's got it with five. Tough jumper. No good. The offensive rebound. No. Stigi rejected. And we will go to the locker rooms. And just like a semifinal should be, it's a one-point Ball game, Pawnee Heights leads it 22-21 over Kiowa County. Five different guys have scored on both sides of the ball. It hasn't just been Carlson and Campbell or Dieterding for Kiowa County. Second half coming up. Oh, it's going to be fun. Pawnee Heights and Kiowa County, one-point ball game at the half. You won't hear the folks in Greensburg, Kansas, say much about what they've been through the last 15 years. But their homes, landmarks, neighbors, and security 
were ripped away in minutes. About picking up the pieces of their lives and planning for a future not for them, but for generations of families to call this place home. These Kansans define what it means to be resilient. They overcame, withstood, and recovered from the difficult conditions thrown in their path of life. Who found a way to not only rebuild, but to reimagine a better, stronger community. A legacy not many communities ever have an opportunity to leave. The people here are humble and have a unique appreciation for businesses on Main Street necessities around the corner, a place to share a meal with friends, and the quality of life elements that it takes to make a community a place worth living. No, you won't hear the folks in Greensburg say much about what they've done the past 15 years. Because when you're here, no words are needed. The story of resilience, pioneering, and legacy continues for Greensburg. And what a story it is. Greensburg, Kansas, pioneering community. Imagine you debating or marching before hundreds of people. Kansas high school students have been debating and performing spectacular marching halftime since school started. You are invited to support the fall activities programs of your school, attend a game, volunteer to judge a debate, or enjoy a music program. A public service message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and KCMC Sports. Being able to bring our production trailer up here to Hutchinson and park outside the sports arena has been a goal and an aspiration of mine for the last six years, and this is the year we actually have finally gotten to do it. This week we have the privilege of covering the NJCA National Men's Division I Basketball Championships in Hutchinson. This year is the first year we've actually gotten to bring our production trailer up to do it. So it's added a whole different element to how we go about making this coverage possible and what we're actually able to do for the event. We actually had to upgrade our replay machine so that we could actually provide the officials the proper replay angles that they would need for reviewing plays. Getting to bring students from the Kiowa County School System up here to actually produce with us was something I was extremely excited about. And it just so happened to work out that we could bring them up this year and give them the experience that no other students, I would venture to say in the nation, possibly get. Television switcher, audio, replay machine, graphics was completely ran by full junior high crew at one point during the national tournament. On a whole separate day, I got to bring my digital applications class up here and also tour the Hutchinson Community College media program and then bring them over to the arena and have them run the cameras as well. We also partnered with Hutchinson Community College to use some of their students. So again, that went in hand in hand with our education mission. Our creative media specialist, Alex, we pulled him away from video to come up here for the week. And it was awesome to have the staffing at the media center to be able to put somebody in that position. But I was also had the luxury of working with somebody who I've worked with for years now at this tournament. He came in from Kentucky actually just to do the tournament with us we are able to now have a little bit more experience going into our next event, having done a full week long broadcast such as the national tournament. With doing events like this as the Kiowa County Media Center, it allows us to put Kiowa County on the map in a whole different way, provide a little bit more attention to what Kiowa County has to offer as an entity that can provide very high quality live event sports production. So the events we would have coming forward in the future hopefully will be at this magnitude, if not even higher. We're wired to connect, and the strength of that connection is more important now than ever. 
When you're no longer limited by distance, a world of possibilities is right in front of you. A faster connection means more time to enjoy life and work. So when our local broadband company created a fiber infrastructure, it removed barriers to business, education, and entrepreneurship, and put the world at our fingertips. The reliability of that connection is maintained by neighbors and friends who are always there when we need them. To connect is to be free. We are Kiowa County. Open spaces, open minds, and open for business. A third generation family business started in 1940, Brown Auction has been serving Kiowa County and the surrounding area with high quality auctions for ag equipment, real estate, and antiques. You'll find us every New Year, Labor Day, and the first weekend in May for our annual antique auctions, as well as many other great sales in between. Yeah. But you can find us anytime online at brownauction.net, offering some of the best antiques you'll find on the market. Follow us on social media to see listings for upcoming items and auction dates. Brown Auction, where everything we touch turns to sold. The Kansas State High School Activities Association conducts official rules meetings, training clinics, and workshops throughout the state with a view toward providing a sound educational experience for all athletes. For more information on becoming an official in any sport, contact Keisha at 785-273-5329. A public service message from your Kansas State High School Activities Association and KCMC Sports. TechKids is a fun learning environment where we are working on keyboarding skills and internet safety. Students are also going to learn how to do pixel art with Google Suites and learn how to do some simple coding. Our goal is to help students master keyboarding skills early so they are able to focus less energy to find the keys during typing, freeing them up to be more efficient in what they are learning. There's these blank spaces and we have to fill them in with letters of the keyboard. At TechKids, I learned painting at my first day. This is my second day, and I, I'm really excited to keep learning at TechKids. TechKids has been really fun to teach. I love getting to see the excitement on the kids' faces when they come in to learn something new. We know the hassle small communities face when having to leave town to pick up the necessities. That's why we are proud to offer the medications and services our community needs to keep living a happy and healthy life right here at home. Our pharmacy staff takes pride in the service we provide, whether that's at our location in the hospital or part of our free home mail and delivery services. From our wide selection of over-the-counter products to custom medication packaging, our instant photo printing kiosk, gift items, and more, we know what's important because we know you. Kiowa County Pharmacy. Locally owned, locally operated, locally loved. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. It's halftime here, 22-21. Pawnee Heights on top of Kiowa County. Coach, that first half, what impressed you? Uh, you know, I thought Pawnee Heights did a nice job of, of uh, fighting the boards, both offensive and defensive. I think uh, Kiowa County got uh, into a little bit better offensive flow in the in the second quarter and uh, let them close down the the lead that Pawnee Heights had. This will be an interesting half. Uh, I mentioned uh, before we came back on how impressed I am that Pawnee Heights can play uh, man defense with six players. So if you play man defense with six players. Uh, you can't foul, and you can't get tired. So, yeah. I mean, that's just uh, the long and the short of it. Speaking of fouls, Jeremiah Thompson, 15 seconds into this third quarter, just picked up his fourth. Carlson had 10 points in the first half. He had eight in the first quarter. His teammates have been huge in helping him tonight. Kyle County does a good job of helping on uh, Carlson when he drives, even if he beats the first man. Uh, there's always two or three guys right that are waiting for him just like this. About four of them. He got all of the way around them all and then got the offensive re or tied up, I guess, 
with Dieterding there. And it will give it to Kiowa County on the... Really, he beat three people there to get to the goal and just couldn't quite get himself back under control again to, to finish the play. But Campbell had a massive night on Tuesday, has struggled a little bit tonight. Four points for him. He's going to get to the rim. Shot no good. Iowa County's bench was looking for the foul call, not going to get it. Carlson. Hamby left it short. Westlow now to Dieterding. Brock over to his brother Brady. He looked to get inside, took it at Carlson, left it a little bit short. Halleck running. This is where he's maybe his most dangerous. Inside, fadeaway is good. Beautiful move there. Again, I, I, I think I came to the tournament underappreciating how strong he is. I knew how good a player he was. Chang had it almost poked free. He'll get it off. Brock Dieterding will wrap it around, deflected out of bounds by Gardner. As here you see Carlson inside, it took the contact and fades away, knocks it down. Right. That's uh, that's a he has a complete repertoire. Campbell inside. Goes around Ryan, they're gonna wave the basket off. It's gonna be a foul on the floor, I believe, on Dakota Ryan. Yeah, they had some miscommunication on defense there. Ended up with two guys on one. And allowed that drive. Dieter Ding will get it into the corner. Campbell catching fire. Freshman put it off the top of the backboard. Deflected up into the air, Carlson has it now. Six minutes to go, a couple minutes gone by here in this third quarter. Carlson will cross over, steps back. He's on the line, but it doesn't matter. It goes in. It's a two. Another great move there. Step back move. Really hard move for high school players. When they first start learning that move, most of their shots are short. Dieter Ding going to take it inside, and he'll go to the line for two. They're going to be on Carlson. So that'll be his second. As there you see the step back and that toe just barely on the line. Right. Dieter Dings, first one going to roll home. You really have to be a uh, strong uh, lower body to make that move and get enough power out of your legs to, to make that shot effective. Dieter Ding hits them both. He's got eight tonight. The lead back down to three. David Hamby will bring it across. Carlson, now to Hamby. Jimmy Gardner with it. They'll dish it off inside. Carlson walked with it. You see Rick Carlson, Alex Dad. Dieter Ding with it. We'll now give it to Westlow. And he walked with it there. Coach Hoffman in his, I believe, sixth year with Kiowa County has won a league title in 2020. One poked free. Ryan with it. Dieter Ding on him. They've got Campbell still on Carlson. Gardner had it poked free. Carlson's got it now. He'll work on Chang. And Jisung is going to pick that one up. Oh, uh, Chang, his second foul there. It's the tighter that you play Carlson on the perimeter, the easier it is for him to get the corner turn. They'll hand it off to him here. He'll step back on Campbell. Carlson shot no good. Rebound track down Westlow. Saved it. Still loose. And the 50-50 ball going to end up bouncing the Tigers' way. Carlson, Hamby, 
from the parking lot misses at everything. That one three or, three or four feet behind the three-point line. He caught it in rhythm, though. The defense was close enough there, though, to bother a shot. Peter Dink, Brock. We'll get it to Campbell. He'll hop step through. Nice move from the freshman, and it goes down. He's got six tonight. And on the defensive end, he's drawing the challenge of Alec Carlson. That one uh, off the hand of Ryan, but to Carlson. Campbell playing off of him a little bit. That dangerous. He can shoot from out there. He'll hesitate, go inside, stepped around Westlow, and he's going to go to the line for two. Good drive. Again, good players have an answer for how you defend them. He's a good enough perimeter shooter that the defense has to play him fairly tight on the perimeter, and, man, is he hard to stay in front of. Carlson knocks the first one down. Leighton Monk there into the ball game. That one good as well from Carlson. He's got 16 tonight. Peter Ding will come to Campbell. Three-point lead for Pawnee Heights. Campbell takes it strong to the rim, no good. Westlow the board. Coach Hoffman looking for the foul call there, not going to get it. As Westlow will come out and uh, Hawkins into the ball game. Campbell to trigger it in. So get it over now. Chang lost it, stolen away, and then uh, Chang just picks up his fourth. So now two guys with four fouls for Kiowa County in Thompson and Chang. And so Westlow will come into the ball game. Carlson with it, 3-10 to go. It was 22-21 at halftime, Pawnee Heights. Monk will wrap it around Hamby now. Inside, they'll kick it out here. 2.55 to go, Hamby. Tough shot. Can't get it to fall, he'll kick it out. Carlson will Euro step through, took it at Westlow, no good, out of bounds, gonna go to Kiowa County. Kyle County's defense, rightly so, really collapses when Carlson steps inside. He has a lot of traffic anytime he drives. Dieter Ding up top. Now Campbell, they ISO'd him on the left side of the floor, and he's going to go to the line for two. So just another thing for the young players watching the ball game, whether it be a gal or a guy. You'll notice that they isolated Campbell on the left side of the floor. He was just as effective going to his non-dominant hand on the drive as his dominant hand. It's really a good lesson for young players. If you want to be a varsity style player, you have to be proficient with either hand. Campbell knocks it down, he's got seven. Monk. Monk with it here now. He'll hand it off Ryan. He went the other way at Dieter Ding. He hops through. Dakota's shot no good. Offensive rebound, though. Ryan, second chance on the reload. No. Dieter Ding had it poked free. Monk got it back. Somehow ends up to Carlson. Took it at Westlow and is going to the line for two. That shot right there was really what I've been talking about, you notice how strong he was to try to finish that shot. Right through the defense, drew the foul, and still had a decent chance of making it. That one gonna roll home there for Carlson. 17 tonight for him. And 
and got them both. 18 for the senior. And they lead it by four. Minute 50 to go here. That one deflected but gets over to Campbell. Westlow will set the screen. Sawyer had it poked free. Will now look to drive inside. Runner is good. Sawyer's got nine. Uh, the way Pawnee Heights is defending him now with the, uh, the uh, lineup that they have, uh, Campbell has the advantage quickness-wise. Hamby. Now Gardner with it. Back to Hamby. A minute 18 to go. Third quarter. It's a two-point ball game. Carlson. They went under the screen on him. Can't get it to fall, but another offensive rebound. Hamby. Turnaround three, no good. That one off of Campbell's leg. Westlow will track it down. Kyla County here looking to run. Westlow outside. Brock Dieterding left it short. Long board. Brady pulls it down. Ooh, crowd wanted to travel. Sawyer Campbell. Kiowa County's got their first lead of the night. And now their crowd fully in it, Coach. Yeah. He got a really good look there. Carlson with 32. They tend to hold for one shot in this situation. And it looks like Kiowa County coach just going to sit back and uh, let them take one shot. Well, they have the lead now. So it's a pretty good strategy. And, and uh, basically, I wouldn't go out on anybody but Handy. Here we go. Ten seconds on the clock. Alec Carlson. Tigers trail by one third quarter. Top of the key, Monk. They get it to Carlson with two. Pony Heights is going to take a lead to the fourth quarter. Carlson's got 20 in this semifinal. We got eight minutes left to decide it. The Tigers lead it by one behind 20 from their All-American. We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. Fourth quarter just getting started here, and the freshman for Kiowa County and Sawyer Campbell has stepped up and trying to match what Carlson's doing on the other side, coach. That one poke free up ahead. Sawyer Campbell with it here. And it just uh, you talked about that he had the speed advantage maybe now they switch off and put right. Hamby on him and uh, I think that's a really good move by Pawnee Heights so that one tipped out of bounds going to stay with the Mavericks we'll get it in here Brock Dieterding will get it now Brady the seniors got eight tonight Sawyer Campbell we'll get it off Brock Dieterding Campbell Turn around, hard shot, jumper. hard shot. Carlson will bring it up here. Tigers by one. Hamby finds a cutting Dakota Ryan high off the window, no good. Westlow rips the board down. Mavericks looking to run. Dieter Ding gonna take it at Carlson. He put him in the washing machine and it didn't go down. We're not gonna be a foul on Westlow. It'll be his third. 
A lot of the fourth quarter here in the last seven minutes is uh, quality shots, good looks. And every shot going to get a little bit bigger the further we go along. Right. Hamby, open three. He rattled it out. He had a lot better look that time, though. That, that's his shot. He about has to take it to keep the defense honest. Peter Ding, blocking foul. Going to be called on Pawnee Heights. So Ryan picks up his second. That the fourth team foul on Pawnee Heights. Kiowa County's committed six, as we'll see here. Dieter Ding inside. They got Westlow a look, and he scored. Really nice sideline out of bounds right there. Nice curl. Got him the ball, and he got a backboard shot. Hamby. We'll get it back. This is it off Dakota Ryan. Back to Hamby. Open for three. Dieter Ding might have got a hand on it. It ends up into the arms of Ryan. No. Tapped around. Carlson quickly inside, and he's going to go to the line for two more. And I think Westlow just picks up his fourth if they give it to him. So Westlow picks up his fourth. So Westlow's got four, Chang's got four, and Thompson's got four here for the Mavericks. And their bench really only runs about seven guys deep. Oh, that was bad luck <laughs> on that free throw. I don't know how that kept from going in. <laughs> Hit every part of the rim and came out. You know, Mattel. Uh, balance here. He's got three guys with four, so uh, basically going to rotate them. Second one, nothing but net. 21 tonight for Carlson. He's been outstanding all tournament long. We are tied at 33. We're less than six minutes to go. Pawnee Heights, first time in this position in 22 years. Kiowa County looking to be the lowest seed ever to make it to a championship game on the guys' side. Dieter Ding. Oh, my goodness, he's way out there. Did you bring your binoculars, Coach, to sight yeah. in some of these? No, that was a long. Carlson almost had a steal. Dieter Ding can't finish. Loose ball out of bounds. Stays with Kiowa County. So this is about uh, the third or fourth shot they're going to get on this position. So for the last five minutes and 19 seconds, uh, if you're watching at home, uh, ask yourself a question when the buzzer goes off. Which team got the best shots in the last five minutes and 19 seconds? Campbell, open. Earthquake. He's got 15 tonight, and he gives Kiowa County their largest lead of the night, and Pawnee Heights going to take a timeout. 5.02 to go in this one, and the freshman coach, 15 for him tonight, stepping up again. Right. Uh, he's one of those players that when he gets squared up, just like the last shot, when he shoots it, you think it's going in, just uh, with his form. And uh, he has a really soft touch, too. Uh, ball is pretty dead when it hits a rim. That one didn't hit any rim. Yeah. That was nothing but nothing but the cords. So on the other side here now, if you're uh, Pawnee Heights, Carlson's got 21. Nobody else has more than four. He's, he's been outstanding, and the, the guys are doing just enough to keep him in it. Right. I, one thing I noticed that I think would help them a lot is that uh, when he drives, if you'll watch, when you have a really good player, Sometimes their teammates just watch. They just watch what, what, uh, what's going to happen with Carlson driving. Instead of moving and presenting themselves where if he gets double and triple teamed, he can dump it. And, uh, I mean, it's just a natural thing. But I just noticed a lot of them, uh, you know, are, are pretty stationary once uh, Carlson has the ball. Thompson back in here for the Mavericks. He's got four fouls, and he's going to get the challenge of guarding Carlson. Campbell went for the steal, didn't get it. They'll skip it backside, and it goes through the hands of Carlson. For Pawnee Heights to win the game, I think Hanby has to, to uh, score the ball here in the fourth quarter. Either Hanby or Ryan has to score the ball and help take 
pressure off of uh, Carlson. Campbell will get it off Thompson. He'll look to get inside. Kicks it out, Dieter Ding this Brock. Now Brady with it, 4.33 to go. Thompson. They got the switch off, Dieter Ding. Now with Gardner on him, he'll get double teamed and he walked with it. Four twenty-three left to go. Pawnee Heights needs a good look here. Doesn't have to be a three to tie the game. They just need a good look. Carlson. To get it into the middle. Ryan. Turnaround jumper. No good. Almost went. He almost banked it in. Thompson running now. Dieter Ding. Little runner. No. And Silas going to pick up a foul. And now free throws coming here for yep. Pawnee Heights for the final right. 404 of this one. Dakota Ryan here, three points for him tonight. And a one and one upcoming. 56% free throw shooter on the year. No good. Coach Hoffman telling his guys, slow it down. Halfway through this semifinal fourth quarter. Campbell to Thompson. Now Dieter Ding with it. Carlson went for the steal and picks up his third foul there. Yeah. It's not a real big concern at this stage of the game with uh, three minutes and 49 seconds left. Westlow and Chang back in here. Thompson and Hawkins will come out for the Mavericks. Dieter Ding will get it in to his brother Brock. Now Campbell with it, 3.45 to go. Campbell has a quickness advantage with this matchup. Going to take it inside. The tough fadeaway, no good. Ball's on the floor. Hamby tracks it down. Carlson in transition. He's flat out dangerous here. Will cross over, poke free. Brock Dieterding staying with him. Kiowa's Crownies crowd trying to get back into it here. Three point lead for the Mavericks. Ryan took it strong, no good. The second chance, and he's going to go to the line. Man, he had a great chance for a three-point play right there. And Westlow fouls out of this one. So just what we talked about, uh, Matt's going to rotate uh, all those three players that have four fouls, and one of them fouls out, the next one comes in. Pawnee Heights needs to do a good job of shooting free throws here in the fourth quarter. Rattled out. It was on the shot, so two shots here for Ryan. I think Campbell and Carlson there both thought it was right. <laughs> a one and one. Ryan got that one. Back to a two-point ball game. Three ten to go. Coach, this one's been a pretty good ball game the yeah. whole way. So now it's going to boil down to, to uh, which is solider, Pawnee Heights man defense, Kiowa County's man offense. Or maybe just Alec Carlson. Well, you know, uh, Kiowa, Kiowa County's going to be patient here and see if they can make uh, make Pawnee Heights make a mistake defensively. They, they got, got a, a good shot, got a backboard it. shot, but couldn't finish it. Thompson got right to the rim. 2.35 to go. Pawnee Heights with a chance to tie it here. Carlson's going to go to the line for two. And Campbell comes up a little gimpy on that one. So Campbell picks up his first, and Carlson here with a chance to tie it with two and a half to go. And a rare miss there from Alec. Kiowa County, four timeouts left. Pawnee Heights got three. Pawnee Heights still with one foul to give. One got, point ball game. Got one of two. He's got 22 points tonight. He's got 22 of their 35. Dieter Ding, Mavericks by one. And Coach Hoffman going to take a full timeout here. We'll take it with them. 
2.23 to go. Oh, it's getting good. The final 2.23 when we come back. This is KCMC Sports Semi-Final Spa League Tournament. to go in this one. It's a one-point ball game. Cameron Bernie, Tim Ritzke alongside of me. Grant Newhold is producing. That's that a pretty big turnover there. So uh, out of the timeout, does that make you pull your hair out on yeah. the sideline as a coach? So our last 220 here, uh, games are won by players making plays. Pawnee Heights may have the best playmaker in the entire league. Maybe one of but, the best in the entire state. You know, he's basically going to have to make a play against three people. They'll go inside. Steve G gives the Tigers the lead. Reed, big time bucket. Tigers by one. Cabo County's defense was so, so concentrated on Carlson that uh, they got an open look, pick and roll right there. Campbell dumped it underneath to Thompson, who will go to the line. The I freshman the, there keeping his eyes right. up. The, the biggest advantage right now that Kiowa County has is that uh, Campbell is quicker than anybody they have to put on him, unless they put Carlson on him, and he has to defend Dieterding. So I think that's their biggest offensive advantage. Off the back iron, no good from Jeremiah. Missed them both. A couple of big missed free throws there. As now uh, Pawnee Heights will take a timeout here. And we've seen them run the last 45 seconds off of a clock a couple of times tonight. So we know that they can take care of it. But right. the pressure from Kiowa County probably going to be turned up to 12 here. Yes. Uh, okay, the, the big question in the timeout huddles here is if – Pawnee Heights with a one-point lead. If they spread out, uh, you know, how are we going to defend that? So if they spread out uh, and we get the ball out of Carlson's hands, let's say, uh, to the wing, are we going to trap that? Are we going to try to deny the ball back to Carlson? All that uh, has to be discussed in the huddle right here. And then, uh, obviously, helps to talk about what are we going to do uh, if we get the ball back one down, two down, three down, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, more than likely with all the timeouts Matt has, uh, I would think he'd probably call a timeout. But the biggest uh, question here is how are we going to defend? Uh, because it's a pretty scary thought if you get the floor spread out here and uh, Carlson has some open floor to work with. Now, if you're not ahead, that won't work. But where Kiowa County needs the ball back. So we'll see what they do here. They're going to be a matchup here. Carlson, minute 22 to go. They do uh, look to maybe run the trap. Hamby lost his glasses, and he'll get them back. Coach Hoffman not happy on the sideline there at that one, so Hamby will have to trigger it back in again here. They throw it into the backcourt. Carlson went to get it. Minute 15 to go. Sawyer Campbell will come guard him. They'll give it off here. Hamby. Okay, so it's just what we talked about. Uh, basically, they're running uh, somewhat of a four corners offense right there. So when he gave it up, they tried to uh, double Hamby. 
Just three now, points tonight Ryan, for him. Ryan, can Hanby make him pay? Got the first one. 69% free throw shooter on the year. He's the third best on this uh, Pawnee Heights team. Knocks him to, uh, down. Two really clutch free throws there, and I mean, he looked like he was going to make them. So now you really have to defend Sawyer here. He'll give it off. Campbell will hand it to Dieterding. Brady, spin move. Hard shot. Fade away, but he hit it. The senior there steps up and knocks down a big shot. And a timeout called here. As there you see Dieterding fades away and got Carlson kind of on that left shoulder and spun away from him and was right. able to rise up and get it off before he got back to him. Okay, so biggest thing here uh, coming out of this timeout, uh, Matt Hoffman got to see what Pawnee Heights is going to do uh, spread out. Now you have choices. Uh, you can half court trap that offense or you can uh, double as soon as uh, Carlson has to to give it up. The last time they doubled Hanby, but they fouled him. It looks like the yeah. less time that you have on the clock, the tighter you'll have to play Carlson uh, as he's handling the ball. They will get it into Carlson, 50 seconds to go. They throw it back now, Hamby. He'll get it ahead, deflected though, but they get it to Carlson. 42 seconds to go. If it comes out of his hand, do you have to foul? No, not yet. Hamby crosses over on Chang. They'll hand it back to Carlson, 33 seconds to go. They now get it That's to Hamby. Deflected. Now you want to foul. It's going to be soon as it, soon as it leaves Carlson in Hamby's hands, you want to foul. So 27 seconds to go. Dakota Ryan will go to the free throw line. 56% on the year. Jeremiah Thompson fouls out with his fifth there. Uh, and now big free throws again. Right, double bonus. So uh, that takes a little pressure off the shooter. Tell you what, Coach, these guards for Pawnee Heights don't get a lot of credit outside of Carlson, but knocking down some big-time shots in some big-time spots. Right. So that's four for four here in the last uh, minute. And now you definitely want to take the three-point shot away. Campbell. You better defend the three-point line right here. Dieter Ding with 18. Campbell in the corner. Switch the screens. They'll hand it off Dieter Ding. We got 12 seconds to go. And Hoffman going to take a timeout here. Ten and a half seconds to go. He's got one remaining. And do you have to draw up a three here, Coach? Uh, you know, with 10 seconds left, yes. Uh, you're either going to do that or unless you have a play where you think you can back cut right here and get the real quick goal and then foul immediately when Pawnee Heights inbounds the ball. So Pawnee Heights has decisions to make too. How are we going to play this? Uh, they don't have any fouls to give, so they can't, uh, they can't foul right here. They can, uh, you know, if, it, if the clock gets under five seconds and you don't want them to have a chance at the three, then you foul. But the problem there is uh, I was always nervous about that because you're always afraid you're going to give up an offensive rebound, uh, maybe make the first free throw, give up an offensive rebound, and maybe foul that shooter. Here I'd rather just play straight up and switch every screen. Chang will get it to Campbell with seven. Campbell, they run Dieter Ding around. They got Brock a look. No good. Chang the board. Brady did not get it off. Pawnee Heights is headed to the league title game tomorrow night. Wow. One thing, you know, both teams played really hard. It's a dis always a disappointing loss in the semifinals. One thing I admire about Pawnee Heights is they played man defense the whole game with basically six players. That's hard to do in a physical game. So in the semifinal matchup here, the first one, Pawnee Heights holds on to beat uh, a really game Kiowa County team. So that sets them up in the finals. Uh, big chance for 
Pawnee Heights. So that'll wrap up uh, our first semifinal tonight. South Gray and Meade coming up. We'll be right back after this one minute break. Cameron will have our winning coach and player of the game. Tech moving into Chase County. Overall, what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet service and the relationship that we're building with Idea Tech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org employment. Cheers. 2001. Yeah. Welcome. And we won it. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. 41 to 38, your final score here as Pawnee Heights wins this one. And we are here with head coach Rick Carlson and our KCMC Sports Player of the Game, Alec Carlson. Coach, 22 years in the making, how sweet is this? Uh, it is, I mean, that the last time we've been in this championship game was the year before I got here. And, you know, we've got third place and, and I haven't done well since then, it, it's just awesome. I mean, these guys knew the history that we had in this tournament and the struggles that we've had here year after year after year and, and they just kept fighting for it and they, and they did what they had to do to get the win. Yeah, and Alec, for you, Kiowa County kind of defends you man, and then they ran a little bit of a trap at you, but one thing that Coach Risky talked about as well is that you get all of the spotlight all of the time, very, very well deserved. But those guys, they went four for four from the free throw line mm -hmm. at the end to, to ice this one. How big is it for them? <laughs> it's massive, and just to know that you know, the four that ended up shooting free throws at the end, we shoot free throws at the end of every practice, us four together, and we always take it serious. It's something we stress this year because last year we'd miss them to lose games, and just it just puts a smile on my face to see those kids finally hit them in big moments, and they just deserve everything that they got. Yeah, and Coach, for you to have guys that you know you can maybe take it out of Alex's hands and yeah. really spread the defense out and know that yeah. when it comes out of his hand that they're going to be fouled and they're going to go to the line and knock them down. And, and they did. Yeah, we practiced that yesterday for about 15 minutes, just this spread offense if we got into it. We needed to keep the ball in the middle. You know, we got to go to the post, do it. If it's nothing there, get it right back. And, and they had 10 fouls when we went into it, so we know we're going for, for two shots every time they fouled. So uh, they, they ran it really well, took care of the ball. Yeah, and then Alec. You guys obviously love to play the offensive game. Uh, just speak to your guys' defense tonight. I mean, you win a ball game and you don't give up 40. A lot of people don't look at you guys that way. Uh -uh. And I mean, we don't really have the height to be just a good rim protecting team. But this week in practice, we just stress talking and talking and talking on defense, whether it's help, ball, screen. And we went into this game, all five, you could tell we're fired up. And just, we I've never played on a team that's played defense like that before. And it's just awesome. I can't wait because we have 10 more games in the season that we get to play defense like that. <laughs> and uh, coach, one more quick one here. Offensive rebounding in this one, especially early. How big was that? Uh, it was well, huge. What's that? That was my number two point. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, that was. He had his four points for the game, and I had mine, and that was both up there at the top. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to give it away. We found a heck of a rebounding drill that we did uh, on on Wednesday, and we were we were surprised there wasn't blood on the floor. You know, and I told that's it's you know this is the intensity you got to have. You can't quite do this in a game the way we're doing it now, but this is the intensity you got to have, not just on defensive rebounds, you know, but going for offensive ones also. And we did that tonight. Yeah, again, thank you both so much mm -hmm. for coming on here. And go more than anything, go have fun yeah. tomorrow night. Yeah, we'll course. enjoy this one. We so, will. again, that your KCMC Sports player of the game, Alec Carlson and head coach Rick Carlson.
going to the championship game for the first time in 22 years. We got one half of the bracket decided. We'll decide the other half in 31 minutes. Mead and South Gray coming up. I'm Cameron Burney for Tim Ritzke. Grant Newhold, our producer. Landon Eilers has been our replay man for you here tonight. One game's done. One more to come. Don't even think about going anywhere. This is KCMC Sports. We'll be back. Hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. So, you want to produce some basketball, but not just that top camera that covers the game action, but the multiple camera, instant replay, announcer commentary, score and team graphics, and integrated video content type of coverage? I think it's fair to say it's never been easier or required less people than how you can do it now with a computer at center court. Setting up the production up here makes it possible to bring all your audio and video elements into a central location. It serves as the best seat in the house for announcers next to you and the best possible camera placement to cut in a floor level angle with your game cam for close-ups. Having multiple camera angles is the best way in which to add production value. You can bring the viewer a courtside seat, able to see the numbers on jerseys or emotions on faces. Even getting cameras up as static shots along the baselines helps give variety to moments needed for replay or free throws. Knowing the equipment to get camera feeds to be compatible is important. If you are lucky and have enough people to man the floor cams and the operators know their assignments, there isn't much directing that is needed, and production value really starts to show. Your production may even include sharing your live output to a video board for the in-house audience, making moments even more memorable. Getting some love. Put him on the video board and Hodgman County went nuts. Oh man, they love him. Oh, take a bow, young man. In many ways, the secret to what makes the coverage have that professional touch is what you can't even see. Adding quality audio feeds from multiple sources brings the game to life. Crowd, court, coaches, whistles, shoes, and yeah, even the rims get mic'd. You can pull most of these audio feeds through your on-camera microphones, and they are mixed right inside production truck. A key element to making the coverage become much more than basic game action is the producer's camera. With a zoom rocker and the ability to see your feed on the computer screen, it makes for a really easy option to reach over and get the extra coverage. Whether that's for moments in between the game action or following the play for a prime replay angle. This becomes the way in which you can maximize your production value while not needing to add more people to your crew. You may be wondering how you would ever be able to operate a camera and be the person running the entire show. It's pretty simple with an efficient setup on the table that allows for your right hand to manage switching cameras and capturing replay using the keyboard. The mouse is ready when it's time to give the sponsors what they paid for, which might be how you were even getting to have all this fun in the first place. Easy access to volume control becomes really important when audio from your talent fluctuates as things get exciting. Also, you know that music you hear in professional broadcasts when they're going to commercial? You'll want to do that too. It really is the backtrack and rhythm of the show. This model of production with a producer running camera, audio, replay, and graphics is not possible if you are also responsible for managing a clock or manually keeping score. Technology can do all the work for you thanks to a Blueframe partner, Scorebird, who has created the Nest. 
This unit is connected directly to the facility's score controller and delivers game data to the cloud that is seamlessly pulled down into production truck and populated into the score graphic in real time. It just doesn't get more efficient than this. KCMC Sports, Blue Frame Technology and Scorebird, the model for producing more with less. With IdeaTech moving into Chase County, overall what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet service and the relationship that we're building with IdeaTech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. Just watch me now. Just watch me. Just watch me now. So the, the bottom line is it, Kansans care about each other and Kansans care about their kids. Yeah, that, that, that's a fact, without a doubt, in my opinion. Probably the, the, one of the most important accomplishment maybe was an opportunity to serve. Opportunity to serve. Maybe it's time to start winding down. Or maybe you can finally gear up. Either way, what you need is the space to do it and the freedom to invest in what matters most. A place where you can find yourself all alone, but never lonely. Where staying busy is always optional, but knowing you are valued is not. Where quality healthcare is for friends, not clients, and access to the best broadband means less time traveling and more time connecting. More time to read stories, share stories, and continue to write your own, where you can know exactly what you want to do each day, 
or simply leave your plans up in the air. Somewhere to drink in the beauty of nature. Share a cup of coffee with neighbors and where breakfast isn't really about the food. Because out here, there's a sense of belonging that can't be explained so much as it can be felt and strangers are just friends that you haven't met yet. So when you embrace all that our community has to offer, it returns the favor again and again. Kiowa County. Open spaces, open minds, and open for the best years of your life.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the final game of the evening, Mead and South Gray. It's the game a lot of people thought should be the league title game, but folks, it's just for a semi-final tonight. Tyler Flavin in his third year as the Mead head coach, and they've got do-it-all junior Brock Key was one of three Buffaloes in double figures on Tuesday night. On the other side, though, you can never count out that man. Coach Applegate, 41 years he's been there. Joey Dyke for the Rebels and put up 12 the other night against South Central. South Gray scores more points than anybody else in the league. The only question is, will me try to run with them? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in Cameron Bernie, the uh, should-be Hall of Fame coach, Tim Ritzke, sitting alongside of me. And coach, tonight, first, Meade, the number one seed in the tournament, maybe the You know, uh, this is going to be a really interesting game. I look for it to be a game of runs, uh, six to eight point runs for both teams. May boil down to whoever has the last run, uh, but both teams will I think we'll run. Uh, Tyler and, and Mark are, are really good coaches and uh, their teams are well disciplined, so it'll be an interesting game. Yeah, neither team gonna get out coached in this one, I would imagine, but South Gray, top to bottom, wants to put up more points than, they could very realistically roll out and say, let's go play to 80. Yeah, well, that's what makes it an interesting game, uh, you know, Again, who has the, the longest, the best runs? Who has the last run? And then again, you know, which team shoots the ball the best? Yeah. So, uh, plenty of talent on both teams to have a really interesting game. And man, we've seen some good, good semifinal games, both uh, on the women's side and the first game tonight on the men's side. So, I don't know how you could ask for much more. Yep, and at this time, uh, they uh, will be uh, performing the national anthem, which we will cover here for you. So it's, I believe it is South Gray's band will be performing the national anthem for you right now. So again, Mead and South Gray, the uh, number one and number four seeds. And coach, these are two teams that do not want to play for third. Right. Uh, you know, both programs have had uh, success. Both of them uh, obviously have uh, excellent coaching. And, uh, you know, I know we've talked about seeds before, but really when you come to this tournament, uh, the seed really doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's nice to be a higher seed and maybe have a little easier path, but your path is still going to be pretty hard no matter who you play. And uh, just remind people that that seeding is just uh, by your record uh, up until the point of the tournament. And so who you've played, and maybe you've played all the hardest teams in the league, or maybe your non-con uh, schedule. For example, I know South Gray uh, lost a tough game to Holcomb. Well, Holcomb's a lot bigger school. So schools that haven't played that, uh, South Gray could have very easily been, uh, you know, a number one or two seed. So, and I know Meade uh, narrowly defeated South Gray uh, early in the season. So uh, I think you can just throw the seeds and the records out. Uh, both teams are going to get after tonight, and, and uh, it's going to be a really exciting game. 
Yep, uh, as you mentioned earlier this year, a 52 to or a 54 to 52 ball game that Meade won in overtime over South Gray. So two teams have already played once this year, and you talked about one through four. Well, Meade coming in nine and two, South Gray coming in eight and two. So the top four seeds in this tournament separated by a half a game. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you have good teams. Uh, you know, you, you know it's going to be a hard-fought game, and, and uh, what a semifinal game in a, a tournament like the spa tournament should be. Yeah. And, uh, and just remind people that when you come to a 12-team tournament, uh, and if you walk out of here with the banner, let me tell you, you, you earned it uh, because they don't give them away. And uh, I think your team, if you're fortunate enough to win uh, a league championship, your team is really – takes a lot of pride in that because they know the quality of the teams and, and what it took to do it. So a pair of teams that are accustomed to playing for league titles and making state tournament runs. It's South Gray and Meade and two teams that really like to score the basketball and Brock Keith, the leading scorer on the year for the Buffaloes gets us started and it, Coach, you talked about it a little bit there in the pregame that it's going to be a game six, eight points, and this one may not mean a whole lot right. as it goes along. Because six or eight points could be scored in 30 seconds here. So uh, nice set play off the uh, opening tip uh, by me. That was not accident. That was a set play. So they'll get it here. This Chronister with it. Stapleton is to his right. He'll look to get inside. That Wyatt Ellis can catch fire in an instant from beyond the arc. Both teams have a lot of guys that can knock them down. Braden Bird, one of those guys for Meade. Can't get that one to fall. Sam Moore with it here. We'll give it over. LaPercio left side, now Jantz with it for the Rebels. A minute gone by here in this first quarter. Not gonna be a foul, gonna go on Wyatt Ellis. So that's the first foul of the night. And that may be one of the strengths that of both teams is they've got a lot of depth tonight. Right, right. Jantz will get it in. Dyke will hand it off back to Jantz. Looking to get inside out. Lupercio thought about it. We'll dump it off here. Dyke, the step back three. Oh, he buried it. Really nice shot. The drive before again, I'd remind for young players, uh, left side of the floor. If you can drive it that hard, uh, go in either direction, it really gives you an advantage. Uh. Stapleton inside knocks it down. I can't tell you how impressed I was with Stapleton, uh, you know, in the opening round. Uh, I thought he he uh, and Keith, you know, really led their, led their team. And uh, Stapleton got his nose bloodied, uh, <laughs> you know. But when he came back in, I just really noticed a, a lot of difference in their squad. So uh, that's always a, a giveaway that that player is a leader. That one inside, Bird couldn't knock it down. Stapleton, to your point, 22 points, and it felt like maybe his defense and his hustle were even more impressive than the 22. Sam Moore, no good. Rebound pulled down. Dyke stole it, though. Finds an open Carter Jans, bottom of the net. He knocks it down, and now we got an official timeout here as LaPercio going to have to put the shoe back on and tie it up. So here, Dyke to the corner. Chance, just court awareness there, knowing where the three-point line is. Yeah, I think so. I think both teams know where the three-point <laughs> line is. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be much doubt in this game about that because there's a lot of guys out here on the floor uh, that can shoot it from there. We were talking about if you brought your binoculars for the last one, it, you might need a telescope for this one right. to be able to sight some of those in as Stapleton gets his second bucket of the night to go. Because about the time they get over that logo, there's a couple of guys that, that that's in range for them. Dominic Martin. For LaPersia, now back to Jantz. Sam Moore with it, 5.20 to go here in this opening quarter. Sam Moore with the circus shot. Chronister right back at him. You know, as well as, <clears throat> as, well as both teams can shoot the three, there's gonna be a lot of driving lanes uh, in the game for players just simply because 
both teams are going to have to close out hard at the three-point line, which uh, sets up uh, drives just like uh, the last one there by Corn uh, Cronister. First free throw off the mark. Set for his second one here. And Coach, he's lined way up off to the side of the free throw line, something you don't see very often. Well, I don't know what the purpose is, but it didn't work that time. 0 for 2. That one, Keith had it poked free. It's going to go out of bounds. And I think he thought it was off of South Gray, but they're going to give it to the Rebels. As that one might have been off of Keith. Jantz now to Dyke. Inside out, Lupercio. Dominic Martin with it. Jantz, that's in range for him, folks. Can't get it to fall. Saved underneath Stapleton. Got it. He's got a man open ahead. Wyatt Ellis layup is good. Just a leak out there, and Stapleton able to keep his eyes yeah. up while in traffic and see it. It's so important for young players. To, uh, you know, a lot of players would not have seen that. And he had the strength to make a really hard line pass. Hard shot. No good there. Lupercio inside. Runner left it short. Stapleton looking to run here for Meade with numbers. A three on two. Bird dumped it off at the last second. The layup from Cronister's good. He's got four. And we're tied at 10 just like that halfway through this fast moving first quarter. Jantz all the way to the bucket and rejected by Ellis. Blocking foul going to go on Jantz there. So his second now as inside Ellis. The length there. Tough, tough foul there. You never want to pick up your second in the, in the first quarter in the backcourt. You always try to teach uh, players you never want to foul a player where they are incapable of scoring. That Logan Keith, you just saw in the ball game for the first time tonight. This Brock with it. We'll kick it outside. Cronister is open for three and left it short. Left it well short. Martin. Dyke. The step back. He's already got one three. Martin. And no good, rebound fought for. Jantz pulls it down and will fire. No good, Dyke, no. Dyke had a really good look there at a, a stick back. Just left it a little bit short. Logan Key, Stapleton now. We'll get LaPercio in the air. Took it at him, balls loose and Martin rips it away for the Rebels. Martin. And it poked free, going to stay. Stapleton, uh, Stapleton's winded. And he will come out here as uh, Wyatt Ellis will check back into the ball game. We're going to find out who's in better shape here. Yeah, I mean, the way the game's going to be played. Chance to Martin. Chance inside, little runner, no good. Rebound ripped away by Bird. Cronister will dump it inside, layup, no good. Jantz up ahead to LaPercio. We'll keep it with that left hand. Fadeaway jumper over Logan Keith was no good. Bird had it poked free by Moore, but he got it back. And it's going to be an offensive foul called there on Bird. As we'll take a look here. That's a bang, bang play. That, that call could have gone either way. Kind of a 50-50 call. It would have been, uh, I think, a little bit bigger call uh, against South Gray because that would have been the second foul. Die On Moore. In and out. Backside, Logan Keith is good. Nice bounce pass on the uh, break right there. Set his teammate up for a layup. More runner left it just a little short. Minute 54 to go. Keith with it now. We'll give it off this Brock.
Look to go ISO, spin move, fade away, wow. His second bucket of the night just took it straight at Lowen there who's just gotten into the ball game. Right. You know, for, uh, again, young players watching the game, uh, just pick out some of the best players in, in any of the games. And just like uh, Keith's drive right there, really hard drive but under control. Just like Carlson in the previous game. Dyke plus the foul. Good strong drive by Dyke right there. And again, the way both teams play, those, those driving lanes are going to be open because they have to honor the three-point line. That foul went on Bird, so his second now as well. So Jantz with two for the Rebels, and now Bird with two for the Buffaloes. Good traditional three-point play right there. I'm not sure that touched anything, but maybe a little bit of the bottom of the net. Yeah, that's it. Kind of looked at it late, and I thought, there ain't no way he just airballed that. <laughs> oh, an unforced turnover there. As said, they threw that one to Mark Applegate. Yeah, and he's not participating, so <laughs> and I'm sure he's glad he's not. Been coaching for 41 years. Pretty hard to, to uh, be more consistent than Mark's been in his career. Definite, definitely a Hall of Fame coach. Tyler does a great job with Meade also, so. Low end, no good. And yeah, we got great coaches through this league all the way. Layup is good there from Wyatt Ellis. And we've got a Hall of Famer sitting next to me. You know, one thing a lot of people don't think about, uh, if you play this style, you're playing three times this week. So to play this style, uh, you definitely uh, have to be in tremendous condition. And also you need some depth. So, you know, in our last game, we watched Pawnee Heights play that basically play six players. Well, uh, Rick Carlson knows there's, even if we could play that way, there's no way because We'd be beating the fourth quarter every game. We'd be out of gas. 13 seconds to go. Meade with it. They lead it by three. Stapleton with eight. He'll get it to Keith with seven. The junior with five. With three. Keith, step back. Fade away. No good. And we'll go to the second quarter. The number one seed leads it by three. Hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org employment. Second quarter just getting started here. And 16-13, uh, Meade with the lead. And uh, Coach, I'm almost out of breath watching yeah. this one. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a fast-paced game. And I think we'll continue that way through the, the whole game, unless one team gets enough of a lead that they can, uh, you know, slow slow the tempo down. Because of the number of three-point shots, uh, you know, most fans are going to remember that. But uh, keep in mind uh, at the end of the game which team made the fewest mistakes. Neither team's really made many so no. far. No, no, they're both very well-coached teams. Keith. Loves to get to that high post and knock down a jumper. That one saved, but he saved it to Jantz. A nice play almost by Vincent Lynn. Backside, Martin. Oh, it was halfway down, but South Gray going to keep it. 
Meade a little bit unlucky there. Uh, they had two guys in position to rebound, just went off one of them's hands. And South Gray a little unlucky because they had a great look right there off the glass. Percio with it. Three point lead for the Buffaloes. Martin now with it, this low one. Inside, had it poked free, got it back. Left it short, rebound, he got another one of his offensive boards. Jantz will miss it. South Gray had two or three really good looks there. Not very many guys in this game are gonna miss shots very often as a spin move there from Cronister goes down. Oh, four point swing there. South Gray basically had the same shots. And they answer it right back. Lupercio has his first one of the night. Logan Keith will get it to Cronister. He'll work on more. Got back to the same spot he just made one from. So if you'll notice that play right there, we've talked uh, the first three days of the tournament how uh, players that cut from the weak side to the ball side, if you let them cut over your face, then you are really at risk as a defender. So Conister still lined up way to the right. Missed that first free throw. Is there into the ball game first time tonight, Connor Salmons. And you can just see there how far over to the right side of the floor he is. And he's 0 for 4. Martin. Come top of the key, LaPercio. They're going to let him shoot it. Missed everything. Dyke. No. Offensive rebound kicks it out. Martin out of chance. He'll go inside. Back to LaPercio. He likes to get it there a lot more. Couldn't get that one to go, though. Logan Keith will race it up. Buffalo's by three still. 5.45 to go second quarter. Stapleton crosses over. Now we'll hand it off here. Keith, oh, he put him in the washing machine. The spin cycle rolls off. Great spin move there by Keith. Left his defender in the dust right there. Inside out, Salmons to Martin. Way downtown, buried it. Dominic Martin hit that one from Hodgman County. Now yeah, that was definitely long distance. Keith to answer. Oh baby, we got a ball game. Yeah, there are a lot of shooters on the floor. Big time players that make big time shots and they go back and forth. Dyke. No good. Keith looking to run here. Had it poked free, balls on the floor, ends up to Logan Keith, into the corner. Stapleton now will wrap it around. Lynn, Cronister will get inside, tried to dump it off to Stapleton and LaPercio took it from him. Bounce pass would have really worked right there. How about that one? Nice pass, Dyke finished it. And Coach Flavin going to take a timeout. Mead leads it by one. 30-second timeout called here by the Buffaloes. As uh, here you see, I mean, Keith was standing on the three-point line and uh, just way out there, and then Brock just the answer. Yeah, there, uh, there are several players that you just can't give that shot to in this game. And again, that's that's why you've seen some straight line drives too, just simply because you've got to close out hard on a lot of these guys. 4.14 to go here in this second quarter and pace not slowing down any no, at all. No. Both teams uh, you know, are comfortable in this style and are used to playing in this style. So this is nothing new for either team. It's a reason, a reason both teams put up an awful lot of points per night. Cronister with it now. So look to get it inside to Ellis. Couldn't get it to him, now tries again, and instead he threw it away. I don't think he saw Jantz. He'll go quickly up ahead. Martin 
Has one from Hodgman County. Can't get the one right on the line, though. Dyke, the up and under, plus the foul. Felt the defense there, Coach, and just went back the opposite direction. Well, that and the way, te the way both teams play, there are going to be a lot of long rebounds in the game. Long shots lead to long rebounds. So you may have a person blocked out that on a normal pull-up jump shot, you would get position and get the rebound. Here, the ball's wobbled to uh, bounce quite a ways from the goal. South Gray now leads it, and Dykes got 13. Yeah, he's had a, uh, got a nice game started. Stapleton. The quick crossover went to spin. We'll kick it outside. Logan Keith had it go through his hand, saved it, but he saved it right to LaPercio, to Jantz, back to LaPercio. Layup no good. That kind of how you want to run the fast break, right. I think, just didn't go down for him. Cronister used the muscle, shot, no good. Rebound by Salmons. Really nice break the last time. Sam Moore from 12, no good. He didn't really get his feet set that time. And now Meade going to slow it down and run a set here. Stapleton, now Cronister. Logan Keith with it left side. They got Stapleton a look. He got LaPercio in the air, got inside, and then had it stolen away by Salmons. He'll throw it up ahead. Jantz got it back to him. Extra pass, Sam Moore inside. Dyke has had a big game so far, extra pass. Jantz lost it, stolen away. Bird will take it at LaPercio, got him in the air and scored on him. And it's his first bucket of the night. And we're tied at 23. I don't think that's gonna be the last time tonight we're tied in the ball game. <laughs> Do we have anybody keeping track of how many times it's been tied and how many lead changes we got? We're already asking our producer, Grant Newhold, to do about three guys' jobs. Can we, can we throw one more at you, Grant? <laughs> he shook his head no. no I don't really blame him. <laughs> Top of the key, now they come right side with it, Bird. Crossover inside at LaPercio, no good. Chance in the blink of an eye, back the other way. Tough jumper from Salmon's gonna miss everything. Stapleton the board, we'll throw it up ahead here. Cronister will slow it down, then cross over. Finds an open man in the corner, Braden Bird. Got into a bad spot. And Yeah, he uh, was going fast enough there that, that he couldn't quite get himself under control. He made the right read, and uh, that was a correct pass. Just couldn't quite get himself under control to make it. 70 seconds to go, second quarter, knotted up at 23. Dyke rejected, but he got it back. Foul going to be on the floor. And there, Coach, the hustle after you get your shot blocked to still right. go back and get it. Right. You'll see a lot of, of young players uh, kind of hang their head there when you get stuffed. He went right back and got the ball again. Uh, Dyke does a very good job of using his body. They got an open look here. Jumper no good into the ballgame the first time. That Max Moore, 10 and blue. So Cronister picks that one up at the seventh team foul now. On Meade and two free throws coming here for Sam Moore. Got them both. Stapleton guarded by Dyke. They'll get it up top here. We're at less than 40 seconds to go now. Stapleton 
We'll get it off Ellis. This is Brock Keith with it. 35 seconds to go. The junior got his shot blocked, saved, but Dyke able to avoid it going off of him. And then had it poked free, it went off of his foot. Crowd wanted a foul call. As here you see Keith inside, it goes up and got on top of it there, did LaPercio. You'll notice that, that Meade basically plays a five out offense, which there's a lot of room uh, to cut through the lane, a lot of driving lanes, uh, basically playing with five perimeter players here. 17 seconds to go, Keith with 13. Now with 10, Brock will get the screen set. He'll dump it back. Inside out, they got Chronister. Now they get Keith with three. Tough shot, no good. Stapleton was right there. He was looking for the foul. And he thought he got fouled, but no whistle. And he'll talk with the officials as he comes off. And South Gray leads it by two. As uh, there you see the spin move earlier from Chronister. South Gray by two. We're going to the half. Yeah, they're the four seed, but I'm not real sure either one of these teams is an underdog. We got the big dogs going back and forth. It's the final day of the 2022 Show Me Ball here at Faro Field in Columbia, Missouri. We start with Class 3 on a sunny but chilly day at Faro Field. It'll be Reed Spring Wolves taking on the Cardinal Ritter Lions. The Lions led by You're just Martin. doing that same little out route for me if you would. I'm ready. So I just want them into the camera with their palms yep. uh, for about five seconds. Hey everybody, Grant Newhold here, KCNC Sports, out here in Columbia, Missouri, producing the Misha State Football Championships at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. I have a rep from Huddle out here visiting right now, trying to learn all the things it takes to do some higher level production with Production Truck, formerly made by Blue Frame, now is part of Huddle. And so since Tyler was out here and I was showing him the ropes a little bit, it made me think I should take a moment to try to share with you some of the things I was showing him about how to make a top of broadcast, a pregame, an intro. And this is something that I've been able to put together all on my phone and then mix into the broadcast as a really professional way to start the show. I like to get an opening shot right away so that the fans can be seen coming in and it kind of establishes the facility and where we're at. So usually that's outside the facility pushing in. And then I'll come in and I will try to showcase the fans as they're filling in to the arena. And that's a good transition from fans to the field or the court or whatever you might be producing. And that allows me to get down onto the field and start isolating head coaches. Are you head coach? Can I get a shot of you for the open of the broadcast? I just need you standing looking out at the field. I'm just going to do about five seconds around you just so we can identify you in the open of the show. And you can look right past the camera. You don't have to look at me at all, okay? Let let's go, y'all. Let's go. Let me get my set and exposure here. There we go. That's all I need. Thanks, Coach. I like to pull out...
Overall, and so I field in Columbus come in at 13 and 0. Reed Spring gonna try to pull the upset. It'll be Andy McFarland's club looking to their all everything left handed quarterback. Blandy Burrell is ready to lead the Wolves on this chilly day for football. Hello again, everybody, alongside my partner Cam Thomas. My name is Bo Bayman. Glad to have you here for the class three championship game. Cardinal Ritter 13 and 0. Reed Springs. 11 and 2 in Cam. I think this should be a pretty good ball game.
Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. Second half just getting ready to start here. Cameron Burney, Tim Ritzke, Grant Newhold producing Landon Eilert, your replay man. Ryland Tedder, Tanner Fulton, and Andy Kyle on the cameras for you here today. Coach, that first half, wow. Yeah, it's uh, the type of ball game we thought it would be. Open three. And the second half going to open a lot like the first did. Graydon Stapleton fighting inside. Couldn't get it to go down that time, though. Uh, Meade ran a nice set, kind of an elevator play where the player goes through and the doors close. Gave him a good look at the three. Just rimmed out. Stapleton up top, Chronister. He'll look to get inside, kicks it out. Now Stapleton with it. They have the size mismatch there with the Bird having Sam Moore on him. They want to go right side. Now he's going to post the little man up inside. Dyke got a hand on it. Two points, I think. Oh. Nope. South Gray got pretty fortunate there because they had a mismatch. Exploited it well. Just the shot did everything but go right. down. Martin in the corner. He's on the floor and he's always in range. That's his second three of the night. That one just a few inches inside of the black line on the sideline. Outside Bird. Chronister with it will come left side Stapleton. They'll get it inside Ellis. Took it at Martin and just the size right there, the length from Ellis. Again, uh, cut from the weak side to the ball side, and, and defenders have to beat that person to the spot they're going to. Otherwise, uh, the result will be what it just was. Moore had it poked free out of bounds. They're going to say it goes to Meade. So there you see Martin. I mean, heels might have been above the black line there on the sideline. Yeah. Inside and then uh, took it right back at him. Did it Wyatt Ellis and now Meade will inbound here. I would look for one team or the other in this half to put together an eight or ten point run at some point here in the second half and, and uh, put the, the opposing team at a disadvantage. Keith hung in the air, no good. Dyke clears the board. He'll hand it off, Sam Moore. Martin, oh my goodness. Oh, I thought that was going to go in, Coach. Yeah. Wow. He hit one from Hodgman County in the first half. They were flipped over. He might have hit that one from Coldwater. Yeah, that was. LaPercio with it here. Need in Two on transition. One. Two on one. It works out for him there as they've run the fast break really well tonight. Right. They close it back down to one, and Coach Applegate going to take his first time out here with 5.16 to go in this third quarter. And here you see uh, the fast break. Yeah. The modern way of running the fast break is when people fill the lanes, uh, the person in the middle now with teams like these two, the two wings, instead of going to the goal, run to the three-point line. So that's one thing that's really changed in the game of basketball. And, and uh, you know, there are two ways to look at it. If you've got the good three-point shooters, that's, that's probably a good strategy. Uh, if you don't, uh, that for sure two or possibly three-point play is uh, probably the strategy you want to use. But both these teams execute that well. South Gray by one and the ball here. Dyke had 13 in that first half. He'll get inside and just an iso play out of the time out there. Right. Something we talked about in the first half that, you know, against a lot of teams' defense, that wouldn't work. But because of the three-point shooters in this game, and how tight they have to play the perimeter. Driving lanes are available. Inside out, Jantz buried it. And then the kick out, uh, once you do drive and, and uh, draw the defense in, leads to uh, what Jantz just shot. 
South Gray by four. Cronister, the spin move, no good. Jantz looking to run here for the Rebels. Oh, he hesitated, went inside. Keith took it from him. He'll give it off here. Two on one. Gave it up at the last second. Layup, no good, but he's right there for the follow. He's in double figures. Martin will give it off Sam Moore. Jantz with it. We'll stay with the Rebels here. Logan Keith back into the ball game. And just as soon as South Gray maybe feels like they're gonna put on a little bit of a run, Meade gets a stop and they get a bucket on the other end. Yeah, it takes, uh, either of these teams can score in a heartbeat. And as soon as they, they, they acquire possession of the ball, I mean the other people are sprinting the floor. Dyke! Hard shot. Meade looking to run again and another two on one. This time he takes it himself and reject. No, we're gonna get a foul call. We'll take a look here. Kept it, Bird did. You be it, the judge. Well, you know, when whenever your hand comes down there, uh, again, there'll be times that you feel like you didn't foul, but when your hand comes down like that, it, it basically gives the official a license to call the foul, and, and the official can't be questioned. And I'm not saying that wasn't a foul. But, just but right if you'll there. watch his hand come down right here, okay, right there, that gives the official, uh, you know, a, a chance to call a foul, and you can't really argue it. Great work by our team there to get us that look and get Coach to explain it. 33 apiece, 340 to go. LaPercio gives them the lead back. I know a lot of people at home are wondering why are they letting them drive like that. Well, they're letting them drive like that because they have to honor almost every player on both teams at the three-point line. Keith, the step back, he hit the deck, the board put back up and in Bird. And here come the points again, Coach. Yep. Yeah. Nice follow by Bird there. Dyke inside will step under, and he'll go to the line for two there. Bird going to pick up what I believe is his third foul. Yeah, and you saw you saw the, exactly the same thing right here where Bird's hand comes down on uh, the shooter. So it's hard hard for high school players to, uh, you know, trying to block shots to, to uh, be disciplined enough to, to play straight up and down, play vertically. Dyke, free throw good. 16 for him tonight. Both teams have multiple scores, which makes uh, a game plan defensively a lot harder. Got them both. He's got 17. He's had a nice game. He's got six guys tonight, Coach, that have scored at least six points. Yeah, that's, uh, again, the, the secret to having a good, good team is balance. One deflected, underneath, stolen away. Martin took it, 2.48 to go. South Gray leads by two. Martin. Inside, Jantz, little runner's good. He's got eight. Keith. Come inside, that Logan runner no good. Rebound by Martin again. Good rebound by Martin there on the weak side. He's gonna look get all the way inside. Runner is good from Dominic. He's got eight. And Flavin gonna take a timeout. South Grace crowd behind us fully in it now. The Rebels lead it by six. 2.12 to go in the third quarter.
Welcome back in here, ladies and gentlemen. Six point ball game, and coach, we were just talking that this one of those runs you were talking about. Right, and uh, nice time out there uh, by Tyler to try to kind of kill the momentum here and, and get settled. They turn it over, Cronister had his pocket picked. Dyke running the floor, ripped away, but they're gonna say a tie up first and it's gonna keep it with South Gray. That was a pretty fortunate call for South Gray because uh, Meade had a guy deep that was uh, gonna be hit for uh, a run out. Set to trigger it in. His chance, he'll find Martin. A minute 50 to go. Martin to Jance, open, bottom of the net again. So just what we talked about, South Gray's run off several points here, now Meade has to answer. Yep, there's your nine point run, it was tied at 35. Yeah. The do it all junior, tries to answer, left it short, Jance the board. And a chance here for South Gray to make it double figures, Dominic Martin does it. He's got 11, and the Rebels are on a 12-0 run. Meade needs a really good possession right here. Bird. Left it short. Rebound tapped around. South Gray's got it. Salmons. Martin calling for it backside. Instead, they'll go Jance. That one, Stapleton. Will steal it and then slow it down here for Meade. They get it to the corner. Ellis, plus the foul, that'll help. Always a good way to stop a run is a, a, a strong move to the goal, get a, a close in shot, and again, the chance for a three point play right here to, to stop South Gray's run. So Ellis here, 12 points tonight, the leading scorer for Meade. And yeah, free throw, he left it short. So a lot of Meade's shots here in this last couple of minutes been short. Really dangerous pass there. Martin, into the corner, Jantz, just hit a three. He's got another! South Gray, uh, South Gray shooters are playing with a lot of confidence now. That's what a run does for you. Stapleton, big shot there. Yeah. That's what your leaders do. 11 point lead for the Rebels. They've got the last possession if they want it. Dyke, inside, got it. Joey's got 19. Keith to Bird from half court, a little bit short. And South Gray ends that quarter on a 17 to four run. They lead it by 13, fourth quarter coming up after this. Winners headed to the league title game. Ag Resources thanks our customers for their loyalty over the past 100 years. We're here to plant the seeds for the future. Grain, feed, agronomy, hardware, farm supplies, energy, and car care. Pride Ag Resources and Pride Ag Ace Hardware. Serving Kansas from Mays to Garden City. With Idea Tech moving into Chase County, overall what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet service and the relationship that we're building with Idea Tech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. 
Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. And gentlemen, second, or excuse me, fourth quarter just getting started here in front of you. And going to start with a Mead turnover. LaPercio's going to the line for two, and that's not what you needed if you're a Mead fan. No. Uh, you know, a little bit of soft pass right there, and, and uh, South Gray defender anticipated that pass, shot the gap, and, and uh, took the ball stronger to the goal, gets to go to the free throw line. Yeah, can't get it to fall. For people at home, uh, South Gray's up 13. But I, uh, I can assure you that, that Mark Applegate does not feel comfortable with his 13-point uh, lead and feel like this game's in hand because Meade can score a lot of points in a hurry. We saw South Gray girls last night led it by 12 at the start of the fourth quarter, and they lost. Yes. We've had great semifinals every game all the way through. Dyke in and out, no good. A rare miss from him. He has 19 points tonight. Almost a carry. Stapleton with it now. Cronister calling for it. We'll hand it off here. Braden Bird. Whoever gets the next goal here uh, is going to make a big difference. If South Gray gets a stop and gets it up to 15, then that's uh, a little bit tougher hill to climb. They got the stop. 6.47 to go. They lead it by 13. The Percio's runner off the back iron, no good. And coach, you talk about you got to get, you don't get back into a game like this with your offense. You got to get stops on defense. Right, right. You always recover uh, on defense. Ellis gets that one to go. He's got 14 tonight. Inside out. Oh, big defensive possession here by uh, Meade. We'll go inside. Jantz, open jumper, knocks it down. I think Dyke thought that pass was for him. <laughs> I think a lot of people in the building right. thought it was for him. I thought it was when it left his hand. So when you're playing from behind like media is right now, you know, the double-digit deal is a big uh, psychological deal. Getting it, getting it back into single digits is a big deal. Nice fake by Stapleton. Lays it in. He's got eight. And going to be a timeout called here. 5.47 to go. They've cut it to 11, but the clock right now, 547 on it, and not Meade's friend at the moment. No, it's not, but the style of the game uh, makes 11-point lead right here uh, a little bit different. So if you take our last semifinal game with Pawnee Heights and, and Kiowa County, 11-point lead with 547 would have meant a lot more in that game than it does in this game, just because of the style. I know one thing uh, Mark definitely has told his players, don't get tentative, keep attacking. So there's always two ways to play with a lead like this. Uh, either you play to win or you play hoping not to get beat. And uh, we saw a little bit of that last night. Uh, and I don't think Mark will let his team play that way. Percio will get trapped. He will find the open dike, threw it back side. Jantz, everybody in the building knew he was going to take it. But the rebound, Dyke, no good. LaPercio got it. And you just can't give a team like South Gray that many no, chances. No, Offensive rebounds are killers. Nice drive there. Out of bounds, going to give it to South Gray. So Meade, Meade now is going to have to apply uh, pressure, even though it's dangerous against a team like South Gray. As uh, I think it just an inadvertent buzzer there. Jantz 
Lost that one for a second. We'll find Dyke, gives it back to him. LaPercio's open, and he got it. He's got nine, and the Rebels have stretched it to 16. Kind of what we talked about out of the timeout where uh, Mark's team is still attacking. The spin move. Runner going to fall there for Wyatt Ellis. He's got 16 tonight. Martin will give it off here and go into the line. Will be the Rebels here. Logan Keith and Sam Moore set to check in here. Two free throws upcoming. Ellis is, is pretty winded in the game. Well, then also in here for Mead, Samuel Lynn, first time in the ball game for him tonight. Big spot to come in with yes. four and a half to go in a semifinal. Yeah, it is. And both free throws going to go down. South Gray's got four guys that have at least 11 tonight. Just in the ball game, three ball off the iron, short, no good. Chronister is open for three, and he hit it. Big basket there, cut it from 16 to 13. Ahead, Sam Moore, Jantz. Dominic Martin is wide open. Almost too open. Not used to shooting no. when he's open. Didn't know what to think. Sometimes it's harder to hit those than it is uh, the ones where somebody's really closing out on your tough. So the foul went on Dyke, his second. 3.58 to go. So Meade has a chance here to get it to, uh, with a three, get it to 10 points. Brock Keith. To Logan Key. Nice drive. Got blocked. Good, good defense. Oh, and Sam Moore, Dominic Martin now. 3.38 to go. South Gray by 13. Pawnee Heights awaits the winner tomorrow night to play for a banner. Inside. Dyke. Oh, went the other way, and he's going to the line for two. He's got 19 tonight. He's been really solid. I've been impressed with him around the goal. If you'll notice, he very seldom just turns and shoots into somebody's face or hands. He always has a, a counter move in there that, to get himself a, a good look at the goal. So Stapleton along. along with Wyatt Ellis into the ball game here for Meade. Dyke got the second, 20 points for him tonight. That one deflected off of some legs, gonna be South Gray's ball here. I would look for South Gray to, to maybe change their offense just a little bit here and uh, through motion, uh, make Meade work on defense. Moore will dump it backside. LaPercio's shot's gonna be blocked. Meade looking to run, they've been good in transition tonight. Key inside with the left hand plus the foul. Really nice break there by Meade. Under control, Keith made a a uh, great cut right there uh, to get the ball and, and going to his dominant hand was able to finish through contact. Free throw good, he's got 10 tonight. The second Buffalo in double figures. Two, Ellis has 16. 2-2-1 two, two, press by uh, Meade. Martin in the middle. We'll go outside Sam Moore. That one stolen away, Graydon Stapleton, and then it's poked free from behind. By Carter Jantz, ran it down, and he thought it should have been their ball. We'll see here. Oh, no, he just poked that one out of bounds. I think Tyler thought there was a foul there. 
Stapleton, jumper, left it short. And then coming down with it, there is Jance, just was falling backwards, took a couple extra steps. Yeah. Unfortunate there, he got a little bit of contact right at the wrong time. I want out of bounds, gonna stay again with Meade. Keith to trigger it in. We got 2.28 to go. If they get a bucket here, they've cut it to single digits, Coach. Yeah, that's always a big psychological deal. Stapleton there fouled by Lupercio. That's going to be the fifth foul on the Rebels. Right. They have one more to give. Keith to get it in. Will come up top. They got an open look if they want it, and Bird will take it, and it rattled out. That would have been big for their confidence. But instead now, South Gray with it with the, about 2.15 to go, and Coach Applegate going to take a timeout here. And uh, do you see him, uh, foresee him just running through, slowing uh, it down, maybe changing know, this, the offense? Yeah, this is always a difficult situation for a coach because you've got a little over two minutes left. And you would like to, uh, you know, the clock is your friend here. You would like to use some clock, but you do not want to get back on your heels and just uh, look for nothing but the pass. So uh, I would I would look for South Gray to run some type of motion right here, but they're always going to be looking for a back cut. And uh, for South Gray tonight, Coach, four guys had double figures. Dyke with 20, Jant 16, and then LaPercio and Martin both with 11. Yeah, again, you know, we've gone over this uh, in the tournament. The secret to a good team is balance. And uh, both these teams have that. And if you boil it down to an individual player, it's the same thing. Great players have balance. And they have an answer for however the defense plays them. So Meade is going to trap here. Martin, the count's still on. He gets it off to Jantz. Had it stolen away, Stapleton got it, so Meade gonna force the turnover and they've got to have a bucket here, it feels like. Cronister took it at Sam Moore and he took the charge. Uh, really, really good defense on the last possession by Meade. Basically, they played uh, a little bit of a scramble defense there where uh, whenever a person passes the ball, whoever was guarding the passer goes and traps and now you are in a uh, zone trap. Starts out man, goes to a trap. That one saved, another turnover. Keith gonna attack the bucket, he'll kick it out. Cronister buried it! He's got 10, and it to an eight point ball game with a minute and a half to go. Meade's gotten a couple of stops. And Coach Applegate going to be forced to use a timeout here with a minute 32 to go. We're going to take it with them. And when we come back, we're going to have the final 92 seconds for you here on KCMC Sports Semifinals. Minute 32 to go here in this one, Coach. And...